Hello, hello, welcome to the stream, everyone. Hey, hi, hi. Welcome on in. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and unmute because I just want to get going. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoy. I think it should be a fun one. I think it should be a fun one. I have big plans. Big plans. Huge plans. All right. Let me, let me message. Lovable Hello. scumbag. Hello. 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 What's up? What a what Very a pleasure good. to have you all Very good. on this fine evening. Thank you. Oh. 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 I think I didn't know there's a. Playing. There's a lost child via Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. You know, we need some music. We need some music, some tunes going. a little going. bit of music. Just a tiny bit of music. Just a little we bit. We need music. Music? Oh, music. Oh. Musachary, actually. Thank you. Musachary. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's um, what plays in a fancy elevator. <laughs> there we go. There we go. It's music. Yeah, it's Musachary. Thank you. Musachary. There he is. He showed up. Wow. So good to see him. Um, how y'all doing? Are you guys you guys ready to play some D and D? I'm 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 anxious to get into it. I don't know about you guys. So ready. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been more ready in my life. Good. Excited. Good. It's it's a it's a big happening episode. I think I've been about this ready before. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Honestly, I've been more ready before. Name Holy one shit. Time. <laughs> <laughs> shit. I feel like we got a little bit of liars in here. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. A little bit of bullshit detected here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. Oh, you're you're ready. Name every race white. <laughs> <laughs> are you a are you a three light starter or a four light starter? Mm. I don't know what that means. You know when Me when, it, when, it, when it when it goes like beep beep beep. Oh, like beep. I'm a four light. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a yeah. four light too. Four light you, is superior. You go on go. I'm a two and a half. I'm I'm a I'm a I, I panic hold <laughs> accelerate as soon as he shows up and then I just spin out every time <laughs> like a pro and then I win because oh. I lured them into a false sense of security. That's the play. Like look at this guy, a one goer. <laughs> All right. So with that said, <laughs> you guys want to know what happened on last episode? Mm. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Man, I'm sweating. I'm already sweating. Um, it's a good sign, right? Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I've just, I have, I have a jacket on and a hoodie and everything and a beanie and I'm just and warm. a top hat. 
the top hat on top of the beanie. Yeah. Um. Okay. <clears throat> okay previously, on Dan Jones and Dragons, having now successfully returned three of the lost artifacts, the party returned to Northcliffe to find little progress had been made in the search for the remaining seven. One of the previous champions, Biri Noriox, returned to the city to relay what she learned investigating at the Isle of Shariza, which was that danger awaits. There is a bumpy road ahead for the Flower Crowns. The Council of Lithia offered the party the chance to follow their own whims for a while, while they continued their own investigations until more accurate leads could be presented to the party. So the party set off to wrap up a few loose ends in the city, uh, a death robot was running loose in Old Town, was defeated expertly at the hands of Trilby. Um, a rift Welcome. to the Feywild in the form of the statue of Vols was sealed, and some rust monsters in a mine were squashed outside the city. Uh, with all that done, a few rewards collected. Uh, the party now, as you were last seen, were taking the ferry back into the city. Um, you decided to take the $400 discount uh, the next time you shop at the Forge and Forestry, which is the, like, kind of general store, uh, weaponsmith, armorsmith, enchanting, tailoring shop in town. It's the, uh, it's, it's the big warehouse Costco of the city. Um, and, uh, yeah, you were, you were just about to arrive back into the city to figure out what the next step is. So, flower, cr flower crowns, what's the next step? Hmm, want to fight some more rust monsters? Coil's like shaking his head, no. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressively shaking, no. Uh, that's a good question. What are we doing? I feel like I remember we, uh, we had a vote in the chat of like what we would want to do next. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Coil's letter. Coil's letter, I think, is what we were thinking about. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Coyle was gifted a letter from a uh, Preston Fitzclarence. Um, seemingly had some ties to Coyle in the past, but they offered a lead on a potential artifact, though they didn't give any actual information other than the fact that, hey, come see me in Brightcoin, which is across the, the, the little continent. Here's a little look for you guys. We're over in Northcliffe. And this is bright coin. Just a little skip away. Just a little skip. A little skip and a hop. I think we were all interested in checking that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loyalty well, quest. We must do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I they might get a new cool armor it, for coil or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Alternate skins. A new button. New button. Oh. <laughs> oh. button. And then we unlock his ultimate as well. Ooh. Oh. Um, so, for for context, it's it's probably about noon at this point. Um, I believe the council meeting was early. You guys woke up and immediately went there, and then went out to do uh, some rust monster hunting. So it's about noon right now. Uh, you know you have the viridescent javelin, the the ship the council has gifted you for the time being of uh, solving this crisis of lost artifacts. Um, is at your disposal. So if you'd like, you could head straight to the docks and get that sailing, or you can wrap up any loose ends you have in town. Whatever you'd like to do. My ends are tight. Oh. Well, except for the... Except for all the ends. The... Yeah, except for all the ends. So I'm I'm ready to jam. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we saw, we found Uncle Pancreas, so... Yeah, you, <laughs> we you sure met did. <laughs> Trilby's Uncle Pancreas. I bought a um, very expensive glizzy. Very expensive <laughs> glizzy. <laughs> I did get hot dogs off the last session. I'm so I glad. I'm living through game. <laughs> they were very nice. Um, you also, when you, uh, just, just for recap sake, um, when you killed the death robot, you were gifted an arcane core, which you have, uh, for the time being given to Estevan, uh, the tinkerer, who you know in town, um, and they also did a thorough inspection of uh, Coil's insides, basically, uh, to figure out what with that goop situation was going on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good old goop. Good old goop. <laughs> and and Coil decided to not 
slap the core in there. Right. But but the offer is still there if you want. That's true. At least not at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. They're and still just holding on to that core. Estevan from completely removing the the goop inside. Yeah, you got like sliver of goop in you still. Couldn't commit. Wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> go <clears throat> goopless. Name of uh, Gelnek's first album, The Goop Inside. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than where my brain went, which was the, the maidenless meme of Megamind, but goopless. <laughs> goopless. No goop? No, no goop. goop? no goop. Uh, hey, does anyone else have anything they want to do in town? Any more last minute shopping? Everyone have equipment and armor and. Mm -hmm. If we want to get any more any more pulls from the gotcha machine, <laughs> if we can find him around the city, that's true. He, on the is, run right now. he he might be in, he might may visit him in jail. I did get a free ring. Are we gonna have to post bond for the chameleon air? Yeah. No. That's like the whole new arc. <laughs> no. <laughs> he rots. <laughs> I feel like he's so gonna be running his shop in. just as well from the inside. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, we go to the jail and, like, all the inmates have, like, rings. Yeah. <laughs> all the guards do, too. All the guards do, too, yeah. God damn. But yeah, I don't have anything, so... If you guys want to get on the airship... Let's do it. Yeah. Let's yeah, hop on over. Mm -hmm. Let's hop on over. Um, all right. So you guys head to the 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 this guy ship, which is in the uh, the the northeastern side of town. Took me a while to remember the word east. Um, well, you are in Northcliff. Yeah, you are in Northcliff. So <laughs> so you're kind of like southeastish of the <laughs> southwest, like southwest of the world. Yeah. Um, uh, so as you guys walk up, uh, there's there's the kind of normal commotion the docks have. Uh, there's a few sky ships docked there's actually like a few massive ones that you haven't seen like anything really rivaling the size but they look specifically for uh maybe larger trade and cargo probably more uh suited to go across seas than something like the viridescent javelin um you see a few dock workers outside and you can see uh grayton uh priscilla and geo all outside talking to them um and as you guys walk up um you see Azru kind of frustratedly in a hump coming towards uh, the group of the three of them and these two dock workers that are talking to them. And he goes, hey, I noticed that we have some extra cargo that's not getting unloaded. Did someone forget that? Or is uh, did, did, I, did I not get the memo or something? How much does that crate weigh, by the way? It's not going to affect our flight or anything. I, I have to recalibrate if that's... A, and as he like kind of continues ranting, Grayton just like waves and he's like, Sir, I, I, uh, that was me. I over, I overstocked us for the trip. I wasn't sure what, where we're going next. So I, I bought a little bit extra. It's already factored in. The crystals are already attuned to it. And he goes, all right, well, just run it by me next time. And speaking of where we're going next time, look who it is. And he gestures to a lot of you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Just stopping by or actually are we going out somewhere? Let's get out of here. It doesn't really answer my question, but sure, let's get on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he starts gathering up uh, supplies, lets the dock workers know to like start undoing stuff. And as he walks in, he goes, no, but seriously, I do need to know our heading. Like if anyone <laughs> knows where, general, north, south, east, west, that's a start. Bright coin. Bright coin. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. It's gonna be a little bit longer, normally like two and a half days, but probably like more three, just without, we don't really know what the weather is right now and we'll have to cross the desert, or we could go around it. We'll see what Carva says. Uh, but should be a little bit longer of a stay that we've had since maybe like coming up from, uh, where did we come from? Philgrove, that's where you guys were? Yeah. Philgrove. I miss it so. Um, so it takes like maybe 15, 20 minutes for the, uh, the shop to kind of, the shop, the ship to, uh, kind of get ready. All, all the, all the ropes get untied. Uh, the, the crystals, uh, are reattuned, uh, and everything like that. Um, 
and you guys are airborne. The ship takes off, departs. Yeah, that that kind of like a circular pod, um, like that Stargate kind of circle uh, that you see the the crystal. Uh, barrier kind of shimmer and disappear that's being created from the spire just for that little circle you pass through the circle recloses everything you've come to expect by traveling in and out of Northcliff um and you guys are off uh let's, let's we gotta get some airship music okay get some get some nice little like yeah that's nice yeah. Yeah. I'm taking off my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's it's a little bit of a snowy day. Um, it was kind of snowing when you, um, you were just walking through the city. Um, but now that you're outside the barrier, um, and kind of gaining altitude, it's getting a little killed, a little little frigid out. Um, no blizzard or anything like that. Um. Those of you who are on the upper deck, uh, you see Carva come up and speak with Azru for a bit. Um, they have a little bit of an argument. Um, it's from the idea, it seems uh, there's bad weather going on the way there. Um, Azru said it's no big deal. They'll make do. Um, and she kind of leaves in a huff. But other than that, there's not a lot going on. Um, the, the the ship is as you'd expect it. Would anyone like to do anything, or do you guys want to just fast forward through these days? Hmm. Hmm. Hey, when we get over the desert, let's look over the over the side and see if we can spot the gauntlet of the eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, like, that'll be edge. like like the day two night time. You'll know, start looking through. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay. okay. People look just out. being efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you do, saying, do you want to hang me off the uh, oh. hang me off the edge again? <laughs> yeah, gladly, actually. Okay. I mean, no. My my only business would be the bag of many things. Roll it. Roll that. How many? How many? Well, it's, it's, you're only on one day right now, so. Oh, okay. I you think, we were you think nothing's happening on this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you said are we fast forwarding? So I just okay. Well, but yeah, you gotta get your sleep, and I know you like to roll the day, so I, I do. I, we're postponing the fast forward because of your back. Okay, oh, that's the only okay, reason. Okay, good. I I rolled an eighty-four. I don't know if I've rolled eighty-four before. I'm checking. Let's see. I don't think I have. Okay, so uh, Trulby. Yeah. You reach in the bag, and you're used to grabbing, like, just these little items and artifacts and whatnot that you've kind of been pulling from this sack. And as you kind of, like, grab something and squeeze, there's a little bit of, like, a... There's movement to it. It reacts to your touch. Um, mm -hmm. And you pull out this small little, um, like... It's like a, a like a, a gecko. It's it's kind of like a it's it's more exotic. It's got like um these. It looks like a tiny like dragon almost. Not not actual dragon. It is a lizard, but it's got like these um like thick scales going all down its back. Um, and it just kind of sits in your palm. It does the like eye lick and just stares at you. <laughs> what color is it? Um, it's like a dark brown, dark orangish kind of a like like almost like a burnt amber kind of. Cool. Um, Trilby doesn't know how to care for a life. <laughs> you don't know how to care for a pet you didn't cr create. <laughs> exactly. Well, also the ones he creates just kind of don't require a lot of maintenance. Yeah. Other give, than... me, give me an animal handling an check. Bully. Just as oh, this, God. this little lad yeah. is perched on you. I've never rolled this in D&D &D before. Yeah. 12? Okay. That's higher uh, than I thought. He he stays in your hand. He he's not spooked, but he's not comfortable. He's just kind of <laughs> same as Trilby. Just the same as you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not spooked, but not comfortable. Uh. Uh. Li lizard. Lizard. He's not Faley looking. He's just comes shouting. over when he she hears him <laughs> shout, "Lizard." Faley, you know animals. Uh huh. What is this? She's 
is a smart ass, so she just looks at him. Lizard. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Um, Faley, I got you this gift. <laughs> <laughs> Faley, Faley puts out her hands. She'll be shakily holds out his hand. Give me an animal handling, Faley. Absolutely. If this is lower than Trilby's, I swear to God, Nicole. I will scream. Sorry, my computer is still having like issues with roll twenty for some reason. Who knows oh, no. why? Yeah, it just go take a little second sometimes. Oh my oh god! My god. Wow. You have a plus five. <laughs> yeah, it feels real bad. He he he's not scared or anything. Like he 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 goes into the hand that's presented. He he seems just as on edge as he was with Trilby. Okay. Uh, he's, he's been in a bag. He's he's on a yeah. day. But he yeah. is in your hand, Faley. Faley just pets him a little bit. And then remembers that Soli is in her bag and pulls out Soli to see if they will get along or not. Soli balls the lizard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would cry. <laughs> no. Right, Soli well, gives a little adventure. sniff. They're going to make a little PS2 platformer. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> little tag team rat and lizard in the fantasy world uh, Faley has now dedicated herself to taking care of this animal as well Okay, yeah you now have this little tiny um mm. like dragon scale lizard thanks I love him <laughs> he is still but like not very attached to you so if, if you <laughs> want you might need to work on it <laughs> I will work on it okay can I is there anyone on the ship that would have like Bugs? Is there a baiter? Is there a master? Is there a master baiter? <laughs> All right, Nicole. We only just started the stream. Yeah. <laughs> no, but is there? Um. It, you're not. No one probably has bugs, but maybe with uh, kind of the same ties to earth and nature you get from Carva that you you yourself have. Um, you could maybe ask her. Okay. Maybe I'll get lucky with the bag tomorrow and get a bunch of lizard food. <laughs> you just get another lizard. <laughs> Damn it. Smaller lizard. Yeah. <laughs> just keep pulling <laughs> lizards out. Bag's busted. Bag of many lizards. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's I know it's like totally unrelated, but like there's that dumb bit in Futurama where Fry gets like the 57 lizards or whatever. Or like the one. Yeah. What do you think Leela will like more? One parrot or fifty lizards? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah. So, uh, Faley has a lizard. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Mm -hmm. Hooray! Happy ending. This is a surprise tool that'll help us later. Yeah. We gotta come up with a name for that lizard. We do have to come up with a name for the lizard. I'll mm -hmm. workshop some stuff. Besides, besides Trilby uh, fishing in his bag for living creatures, uh, does anyone have anything they'd like to do as you enjoy the, um, the, the, the air flight? You know what I haven't done in a very long time? Yeah? Can I pull from the deck? Of course you can. Why, you why would you? <laughs> why wouldn't I? Well, a lot of reasons. <laughs> I can think of a lot of reasons. You remember what last time you... Nope, sure don't. What did I roll? Uh, let me just load that up. I believe it's a D20, though. It's a D20. <laughs> Lucky number 13. Number 13. You explode. Um, you, you pull out a card, and it has a, a, a night sky on it, and one pronounced star. Um, and this star, it kind of, like, burns into your, like, like your vision and it's almost like you, you know, like you know when you look at a bright light and then you blink and it's everywhere right mm -hmm. it's like that you this this perfect image of a star um and for some reason it 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 like even when you close your eyes it feels like it, you're looking at like a bright star like a bright sunlight mm -hmm. that's it that's it all right Sounds good to me. Thanks. So for the rest of the day, you're just blinking a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> your your blinks feel very uh like unrefreshing, I guess. Oh good. That's great. I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I have no one but to blame but myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could have been a lot worse. Could yeah. <laughs> Has been. You could try again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Unless. No, 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 no. What if you had I'm to pay to draw ballsy. a card? Would that well, make what you if you had to pay more? 200 gold to draw a card? <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. Pay 200 gold and you get to draw a card, Nicole. No, 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 no. <laughs> But I was going to be anything. really upset if you're like, it's a lizard killer card, no. asshole. <laughs> it was all think, lizards within radius. Do you think I would do that? Yes. Wow. I, I do. <laughs> Not intentionally, but it just happened to be in the deck. No, it yeah. just happened to be Weird there. What, what were you to do? Specific thing. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, while we're doing this, Trilby... Can you give me a wisdom saving throw? You have oh, minus pleasure. 10 to this roll. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, can, uh, um, can I flash of genius this? Absolutely. Oh, okay, great. Um, your, your wisdom, wisdom modifier is already minus one, right? Uh, my wisdom is one. Right, okay. My strength is minus two. There's that. Okay. And then I can flash of genius add... Intelligence five, so I rolled an eight. So you rolled so a minus negative two. two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You get you get um, like the hair stand up on the back of your neck, and you're not really sure why. Just kind of as you're kind of walking about the ship throughout the day. Okay. Probably from touching that lizard. Yeah. Might be an allergic reaction or something. <laughs> it might actually be. <laughs> <laughs> You you, you look at your what... hand. There's you you have no infection. There's no bumps or anything. <laughs> okay. Right. Wow, my hand's really red and like puffed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but would anyone like to do anything else before we take our, our your the first? You 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 only get like a, a half day's travel in this first day, um, but the sun starts to set. Um, once it once the kind of night has has passed far enough Azru, you know lets most of the people uh go about their sleep uh he gives like ardwill a sign off so he can he can go bunk for the night and they can switch off in the middle of the night um and and do you guys go to sleep anyone anyone doing anything with their their night before you you tuck in i imagine coil is like more um like nervous, restless than normal. Maybe mm-hmm. like a lot more pacing than normal or something. But otherwise, I don't. Yeah. I imagine there's not a whole lot for him to do to like relieve stress here. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of like just waiting mm-hmm. and pacing. Okay. Just for, for me, um, you'll notice we got a fun new map yeah. here. Ooh. Oh, um, so this is this is the the interior and the all the levels of the iridescent javelin. Um, you see the upper deck is still the same. You have your like common area right here in the center one. Um, these are the the the, the four kind of like initial crewmates chambers. You have the captain's quarters down here, uh, the engine room uh, with where Vespi sleeps. Um, and then downstairs is where you guys have your bunks as well as the, the deck hands. Um, and then there's the cargo loading area here. So, um, as we come to like this first night, like we'll, we'll say like around midnight, um, go ahead and place you wherever you think you would be. If you're sleeping, just pick one of the cots. If you're walking around, what have you, you can place yourself wherever you feel you'd be. I must know though, can this cot actually hold coil? I, Not it's, this cot. This, this hammock, it looks like. Yeah, we'll say uh, maybe it got reinforced after the first outing. So maybe maybe you have a specialized cot. Uh, I was going to say, is it the kind of hammock that's like just off? So like you're barely touching the ground. So when Coil gets in it, he's just laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> this is so heavy. 
well, it just stands on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Instead of rope, it's right like wire. It's like reinforced and everything. <laughs> he will probably be on the deck. So this is after we're, we've called it a day and we're... Yeah, this is like... Nah. We're, we're probably at like midnight. Sun has gone down hours ago. Oh, yeah. uh, most of the crew is probably in bed at this point. Tril Trilby's out. Too. <laughs> Trouble's been asleep for like six hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Okay. Um, in that case, actually, while you guys are trying to sleep, um, Faley, you find that starlight is really obnoxious and you're not able to sleep tonight. Cool. Um, so you do gain one level of exhaustion. Okay, what does that mean? Um, so that means basically you have a minus one to most of your, your checks, I believe. Let me, let me just double check on uh, that. It is disadvantage oh, to there all go. skill checks. I'll just go ahead and click that disadvantage button now. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> uh, restores once you complete a long rest. Yeah. Okay. So you Which you can't now get. <laughs> that that's that star card it 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 ruins your sleep of the for the night um yeah that's yeah sad. a little bit you're doing really good at drawing the bad ones <laughs> <laughs> there's there's good cards there are good oh yeah there's oh, one i thought they were all bad no nope. okay bailey drew a one that doubled their money that's true that's how i got rich yeah and then you drew a card that made you lose all your stuff yeah I but that was only for 24 too. hours there's only 24 yeah hours. i did I did lose all of my clothing. I'm a benevolent god. <laughs> <laughs> I take your clothes, I give them back. Eventually. Um, <laughs> so in that case, then, I will allow you in this role as well, Faley. Faley, uh, Coil, and Morenthal, can you all give me perception checks? E 17. Oh. Oh, Faley. That's real bad. That was a Wait. nat one. Plus yeah. eight to its perception. That is... Yeah, you are... You're trying That's to sleep, and it is not happening for you, Faley. And it, it's it's one of those things like the bright light of closing your eyes versus just trying to feel exhausted and tired. Keeping your eyes open is, like, really hard to focus on anything else. Um, Coil and Morenthal, as you guys are kind of walking around the ship, um, you hear... What sounds like like scraping, like something heavy is getting moved, and it shifted below decks. It's like you hear a, a, a quick like, and then like you listen in close, and you can still hear sounds like that. But it's like it's it's noticeably being quieted after that first I'm just gonna, noise. I'm gonna look at Coil and see if he heard that too. And then just sort yeah. of gestured it down under decks and just go, we should probably see what that was. He nods. Okay. All right. We get, get to the, the below deck. Um, so right, you can see like right here, these little side stairs. Oh, yes, yes. It, it, open, it, it opens up right here. And then okay. this, this up here is the lower chambers. Um, so you start going down about where you are right now, Morenthal. You mm -hmm. hear, um, you can hear this kind of like sudden, you, it's like you almost feel a sudden shift in the ship, like a noticeable amount of weight just got added to one side. Just, just ever so slightly, mm. because it's it's smooth skies. So there's no no turbulence or anything. So it's really noticeable. Yeah, it's just it's just ever so slightly as you're walking too, and it kind of throws you off balance. Um, give me a perception check as well. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, and yeah, coil as well. Yep. Okay. Um, you can see uh, most of the crew is asleep. You do see Gray in there. And he is kind of just like making some like late night food. He's got like some bacon on grilling. Um, he doesn't seem alarmed or noticed 
anything. He just kind of is about his duty. He's not um, pulling a UNC of Thieves, is he? <laughs> He's just throwing some raw worms, worms and then walking away. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good play, man. Yeah. They never see it coming. <laughs> Um, no, he is, he's, he's not, he's actually cooking something. Yeah. Hmm. So what, what side of the ship felt like it, it got heavier? Uh, the Portal. right side. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, starboard. 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 Always takes me a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way I always remember is port is four letters and left yep. is four letters. Port and that's left, that's I how do. I always do it. Yep. yep. <clears throat> um okay so it doesn't look like anything on this level has yeah like, looking around changed. nothing seems to have changed like these these four kind of doors on your sides are closed um but you mm -hmm. know those are also like the crew quarters mm. my mm. I might check the, the engine room real quick then just in case okay you see, like, um, kind of half under covers, uh, like, her leg is is kind of, like, hitting the floor. She's not fully in the bed. You can see Vespi is just out sleeping. Yeah. Okay. I guess this floor looks clear. Let's check deep down below. Maybe it's in the cargo. tiptoe past everyone. Alright, before you continue, you can both mm -hmm. be where you are. Um, what you see are six figures that should not be on the ship. Um, oh, God. They have blades out, ready to strike four of your companions in their bunks. Two of them are walking to you and see you as you come down. No one's directly about to be attacked because you caught them by surprise. But what I'm going to need is initiative from you and Coil. Oh boy. 24, baby. Oof. Fast lad. Oh. Oh. Too fast lad. We're on high alert. That's nice. yeah, that's a that's a really good roll. Thank God. Y'all fight quiet. We're tired. <laughs> Especially Faley. Uh, uh, Faley just staring up at the Actually, ceiling, just like <laughs> Faley. Like Finally, you won't have to, to knock me out. be woken up from this. Like as soon as there's noise noticeable, you'll be awake. The rest of the people will have to be like actually woken up. So this the card actually was good. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it was. <laughs> okay. Well, that one's tiny. That's the lizard. The lizard was an assassin, too. <laughs> <laughs> Got a tiny knife. Okay. Uh, one thing to notice, I'm just now realizing this doesn't have a grid assigned to it, but I think the uh, the measuring thing will still work accurately. Um, so oh, yeah, it does. It's, 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 it's pretty precise. close quarters, though, for the entire ship, though, so it's it's not yeah. like range should be yeah, a big issue. Yeah, the whole ship is pretty... The room is, like, 25 feet long, so... I don't think movement should be a problem for us. Um, unless we're running all over the ship. Okay. Ooh, you did get... You rolled very well. Um, okay. Well, let me... Let me change up the music. <laughs> 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 all right. Um... Starting off, you you walk in, you see these these six figures um, wearing a very familiar garb to you, Gam. They have uh, darkened black leather armor. All of them have a smeared bloody handprint uh, painted across their chest. It's a familiar telltale sign of the blood letters. <clears throat> um, okay. And as one of them is walking to you, you see a point of recognition in their eyes. Their face is obscured other than just their kind of eyes. They have hoods up, uh, masks on. Um, but you can see a a bit of recognition as they kind of ready themselves. Um, I will say in this moment, because you got the jump on them, uh, I will allow 
Morenthal and Coil to go, like, you have a round of surprise. Okay, Ooh. sweet. Um, in which case, I, I think I'll just immediately just start slash it into one of them. Is I recognize the danger we're in. Um. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go straight for the one right in front of me. <clears throat> does a twenty-one hit him? Twenty-one does <laughs> hit. And oh then, my god! Oh. Jesus, total that up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I was worried you were going to say that. Uh, 31, 43, 49 damage. Wow, okay. Uh, he's still standing, but you fucking tear into this guy. Like, you can see as you slice through him, um, like, there, there's there's visible blood, like, coming from the, the, the face mask. Um, yeah, uh... You, you, you kind of hear him, like, cursed under his breath. Um, give me a... Like, give me an insight check just on the mannerisms that you're noticing from this. Six. It's it's hard to it's a, a dark figure that you're just angry at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit blinded. Um, yeah. I'll, I I guess I'll just end because okay. I kind of just used my bonus action to just fucking deal a lot of damage. So no, you were totally good. Yeah, yeah, I'll just send it to that. Everyone else can wake up later. All right, um... Coil, you are up. Whoop. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's about to be like, you were really you? thinking about it. I was uh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I was saying, um, he's gonna activate the rage. We're, we're okay. raging. And he's gonna come over here and he's gonna try and finish off this guy. Uh, yeah. More dolls than in a fight. <laughs> yeah. In a fight, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Star Wars movie. <laughs> in a fight, right? <laughs> Trilby just in his sleep. In a fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, twenty hits. Um, awesome. and with with that, you you cleave through this first one. I'm just gonna remove him so he's not blocking path. But this, you you slice through this first guy. I just got Wonderful. splattered with blood and giblets and rolled over. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Would that be next. enough to wake Troby up? Not no. yet. Uh, I will <laughs> give them a chance, though, uh, <laughs> once this surprise round is over. Yeah, that's fine. Um, if Faye's awake already, sleeper. can she, like, work on waking up everyone else? Yeah, so, so with this surprise round, like, all that happened, like, in seconds. So, Faye, okay. you can immediately roll uh, initiative right now because you're already awake. You just suddenly heard like a, a, a spatter of noises uh, all of a sudden as these these cloaked figures were walking up on you. And you can see one of them is like two feet from you with like dagger at the ready for you. Um, oh, good. Um, and with that, um, can everyone else give me a uh, perception with disadvantage? I'm looking for 10 or higher for you to wake up. Uh Coil has one more attack before we move. Oh, yeah, nope. yeah, yeah. Go, go. Yeah, do, I hope Trilby sleeps through this. Nope. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, oh probably 11, 11 misses, oh. yeah. I think Jody right. said BLB real quick. Oh, okay. We can just well, assume it's probably. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll say Gelnick's sleeping until... <laughs> um... <laughs> So even even with this these noises, like um, we'll give you a check for if if someone's actually like actively trying to wake you up, but this is just for general sounds of you hearing stuff. You guys are having a nice peaceful sleep though, uh, Hobson and Trilby. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so back to the top. <laughs> Morenthal, you are you are at the right. Uh, okay, I'm going to immediately go for the one in front of Bailey then, and okay. I'm going to. I can still. Oh wait, he hasn't had a turn technically, has he? No. Because yeah, you you oh, have so a surprise round, well. and you're still acting before him in initiative. Okay, we're gonna straight up same as last time, just assassinate the fuck out of him. I. I feel like at this point I'm getting a little bit emotional and I'd probably be like kind of screaming. Okay. Um half to to get people's attention and half to uh try and put them off kilter because I know that you know they're trying to be silent and sound is not really going to be what they're wanting. Right. Um does a 15 hit? 15 is their AC. That is what you needed. Phew. Uh, 36, 39 then for that one. 39. Okay. Yeah, you are still standing, but chunky damage. Chunk, chunky. Okay. And I'll, I'll end my turn then. All right. Quail. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna... Great sword, this guy. 24. Is, are you going for the same one or the one in front of you? Yeah, this this one in front of Faley. Okay. Okay, so 15. Oh, he's hanging on by a thread. We go again. Oh, oh 10. And we miss. You... He he kind of he kind of ducks and like you hit the post that is like in holding up the cot and it's it's kind of hard to maneuver a great sword in kind of tight quarters. Super fair. Um, we're gonna action surge. And okay. Go again. Um. Just to roll with that that like RP beat, I think we're just going to um, let go of the greatsword with one hand and use the claws. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he gets two attacks per action with the claws. The, okay, so <laughs> like the confidence in this guy's eyes as he's like, you can see the life leaving him. You drop his greatsword and come and catch him with the claws, like his overconfidence, and you just with that first claw attack, you drop him. So you still have all your Wonderful. extra stuff still. Excellent. <laughs> this this motherfucker is next. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows it. Mm -hmm. Um so we We got another claw attack. Uh oh. 16 hits. Okay. And then we go two more times with the claws. I'm pretty sure that that's right. I'm just making sure and I'm not like cheating. Deals 1d6 slashing damage on each of your turns when you attack with a claw during the attack action. You can make one additional claw attack as part of the same. Yeah, so I so think you get, you'll get three claws because you're using uh, your right. attack for it, which will give automatically an extra attack, and then one of those claws gives an extra attack. Yeah. Okay, so we get two more? You get one more. One. There you okay. go. Okay, so it was a nine on that first one, uh, and then seven on the second. Yeah, I think, I think, like, as you're clawing across them, you kind of match the logo that's, like, on their armor that like that 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 blood handprint you kind of cleave yeah. through that and actually like natural blood good okay anything else for coil that is it for coil i right. roll a d20 real quick <laughs> just me if, or no i want to go for it your higher trilby has a toot yeah he tooted <laughs> tooted <laughs> And there's a little rock in your hammock. He rolls over. <laughs> Slight swinging. Um. Okay. This one is going to uh, 
kind of dip between the legs of you two and come up on the backside. Uh, you you know what they're doing, and they're flanking both of you. Um, so uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go for this. The two on coil. Um, and you're very lucky because you. You're you're an assassin. You know what these people can do if they go before you in action. <laughs> <laughs> we are very lucky. Um, oh yeah. Uh, that is no a uh, twenty-five to hit for the first. Uh, the first hit. Wait, never mind. Wait, that's that's all I have. They have they have a, a one like kind of main dagger it looks like, um, and it kind of sinks into you. Um, are what immunities do you have, Coil? Um, so I have resistance to like piercing. Yeah, that's it. bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. I don't know if I have any. I have immunities to. You have like immunity to poison condition, right? Or something like that. You have advantage on saving throws against being poisoned and you have resistance to poison damage. Okay, very important. I will need you to make a disease. constitution saving throw then with advantage. Oh. So, um, oh. It's good. Very good. Oh. Um, okay. So. Strong dog. Strong dog doing work. Very strong. Get Trovi in his sleep. Strong dog. <laughs> strong dog. Ooh, no. big, big strong dog with a goop. Um. Okay. So. Thirty-four half, because you're saying. And you said you're resistant to poison damage. Yes. Okay, so that's half again. Um, nine, and then you're also because you're raging. So seven. Uh, 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 oh my god! Fucking oh, rogues, oh. man. There's too many dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got no seven spells. Got a lot of fucking modifiers. Jeez, oh man, I, there's something about DM rolls versus player rolls, and it's like, I don't want to roll good, and it's like, here's three sixes on, it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, okay, so that's, uh, okay, so this is already reduced with it. You take okay. 14 piercing, or sorry, 14 slashing. Um, and poison nine uh, poison damage. Um, as as you can see, like as they cut through that that first attack, um, there's kind of like a, a sickly green uh, like glow to the outside of the blade. That as it cuts into you, um, you notice like it's clean after that. Mm. Um, the next one is going to attack. Uh, Twenty three to hit. Yeah, that that do hit. Fifteen, nineteen. <laughs> oh lord. Um, Twenty-three. So much math. There's so much math, dude. So much. And then that's twenty-seven. Twenty-seven's halved, and then, um, this one will be another con saving throw with advantage for you. Okay. Did it go? It didn't go off. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Um so you take uh the twenty seven is reduced to 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 what? <laughs> What's math? Fourteen. You take fourteen okay. slashing, um, and thirty poison damage 
Um, Oof. Uh, that is those two, and then the two on Morenthal. We didn't have oh, to do a seven to hit on the first one. I think that's a miss. That's good. And a 18 to hit on the second. <clears throat> Just hits. All right. Constitution saving throw. No, no advantage unless you have advantage on poison resist. Uh, I don't think I do. Yeah, no, I don't. Constitution saving throw, you said? Yeah. Uh-oh. 11. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> um. If I was awake, I could help. But I am fast. Is that what she'll be saying in his sleep? <laughs> yeah. No, no more in thought. It's my glizzy. Okay, so <laughs> just a friendly reminder to you. This is all counted as one damage source because it's one attack, right? So it's yep. 16 slashing and 31 poison. Wow. But what I'm going to do is I'm mm -hmm. going to dodge it. That's what you're going so to do. 16 and 31 <laughs> becomes 8 and... So that'll be, I think, 23. No, 24. No, sorry, 23. 24. 23. 23. No, yeah, 23. It's, yeah. it's rounded down. So 23 damage you take. Okay. I can live with that. Um, That is their go. Faley, you are in your bed, and you see these four figures surrounding uh, your two friends who are standing over two corpses already. Mm-hmm. Did I uh, see any of the attacks, or am I? I think you hear, you heard them, and that's what startles you up. So you can see they're in the middle of combat, like okay. they are Do fighting I, at this moment. Would Faley have to ask on a scale of one to however many how hurt Morenthal was, or did she hear that he got hurt? Uh, I think you can see both of them are injured, like like they 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 have cut visible cuts and bleeding. Like okay, she is going to a healing word. Uh... Morenthal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Four, nine. Nice. That's that's, that's honestly, a good healing that's word. Still a lot. <clears throat> that's a good healing word. That's the best you can do. Yeah. That's that means, it's a yeah. D four with your wisdom modifier. I wish I could give you more. It says it's thank you. Yeah. Um, can she try to wake up anyone, or is that? Sure, I will say if you use your action, they can get just a uh, a flat, no disadvantage roll. Like they, they can have just a flat roll to wake up. Okay. If, you wanna, uh, if we want to choose them. Next to Trilby, so she'll try to wake up Trilby. All right. So Trilby, <laughs> she would give you advantage, but you're sleeping. So just a flat uh, perception check. All you right need up. is a 10. Yes. Okay. Let it be known that she's shaking yes! wildly. <laughs> okay. Perfect. You're still sleeping. It, it's hard. You are a tough sleeper. You are in it. Early to sleep, late to wake up. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that I I must have not been paying attention. I didn't roll the perception. Okay. Yeah. I think I think it was you did a quick BRB. If you want to give me a perception, Gelnick, with disadvantage. And 10 yeah, is what yeah. we're looking for. So oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oop. Uh, disadvantage. Holy shit. Oh, hey, you okay? So you're you're still snoozing for this first round. There's no sleep as good as like on an airship in an airship hold. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's, you yeah, get the yeah. gentle rocking, the creaking yeah. of the wood, yeah, mm. the hum of the crystals, yeah. the screams of your friends, the splashing of assassins, <laughs> splashing of warm blood. Like, what if a boat wasn't rocking back and forth? But it was just, just gently carrying you a place. Incredible. <laughs> um, okay, that was your that was your. Your bonus, and I'll say it was a it was a free action to shake Trilby if you want to still do an action. Probably just really. kick the side of him or something. Um. If I uh, could, I cure wounds. You can't cure wounds because um. I know you, I you ask are... that literally every single no, it's, time. No, it's 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 confusing still to me. Um. So you did a bonus action spell. You could do a cantrip on the same turn as a bonus action spell, or you could like melee attack 
Um, you could wild shape. You could do any 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 of like your features, but you can't cast another like above first level spell. Uh, so this is would starry form be. You could you could go into starry form. I think starry form is a bonus action though. Yeah, I'm really bad at planning this out, huh? Um, you were good. You just woke up. <laughs> you know what? One day, one day I'll I'll learn the rules of spells. Um, no, I'm good then. Okay. All right. I uh, do love that I rolled a 19 to have a sleep fart, and then I rolled a seven to actually wake up and be useful. Yeah, you wasted a d20 on that. All right. So you since sure we're did. back yeah, to the top, that is what you did. I'll say all the sleeping members can give me another disadvantage perception check. Uh, Trilby, you can make yours just a flat roll because you've been forcibly moved. <laughs> okay. Oh. Aww. I'm awake. Okay. Okay. We got. We got. We got two lads awake. My eyes snapped open like a, like a SpongeBob or Ren and Stimpy like close up. <laughs> Crunt, crusty eyes. Yeah. Not moving. Just Ooh. eyes shot open. Oh, oh. Gelnix it, snoozing. That's a cool roll. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Hobson and Trilby, you can roll your initiative now. Okay. Uh, strong dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right, let me, let me reorganize that. Okay. Um, top of the order, back to Morenthal. Yippee! Uh oh god. Um uh, Let's go to the one in front of Gilnick. Just cause I notice he's still asleep. Okay. Uh this just for the, the record, that was the one that missed you with their attack, so you can still see the poison on their blade. Yeah, yeah. In that case, yeah, definitely going for that one. Okay. Uh yep. Yeah. Twenty seven hit. 27, yeah, just barely. <laughs> you gotta make sure. Uh, for 22 damage, and then I'll get my offhand as well into them, hopefully. Does a 21 <laughs> for an extra yes, 2 damage? 21 for an extra 2. Yeah. So, 23 damage overall. Straight Beautiful. into him. I, I did the good math first, and then I did bad math. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else for Morenthal? Uh, no, that'll be all. All right. Coil. Okay. Um, you you were attacking this guy, right? Yeah. Could, yeah, this one. The one that has his poison left still and is in front of someone who's still asleep. Yeah. And this one in front um, was the one you attacked last turn. Okay. I'm gonna so continue the ones going by this Morenthal are both damaged. We're gonna keep going for them. Okay. Um, we do. Do we go? Do we? Do we go claws or sword? I kind of like the claws. We'll keep going claws. Oh wait, I don't know. That wasn't supposed to be an advantage. I'll give it to you because I like it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Benevolent god. I like it. Because you went for claws over sword, and I, I, I rewarded you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Plus, it sucks. it sucks rolling and then accidentally fucking out on, like, a, a crit. <laughs> I know. But I would have I would have accepted it. <laughs> okay, so that's okay. nine on that. That lag. Yeah. Again. Yeah, and 26 for another 8. I think it's one more, right? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. oh and the, the, the 9, he's he's wised up now. He kind of sideswipes and he, like, steps between, like, Faley and Trilby's uh, cots for a second. All right, that will be his turn. All right, it is their turn. Um, I'm going to roll the one who hasn't used the poison yet because that's more rolls. Um, so on... <laughs> Get the math out of the way. Yeah, uh... 22 to hit, Morenthal. 
Yeah, you know that hits. Con save, baby. Oh, God, I hope this well. girl's high. Uh, flash of genius, <laughs> plus five. 14, then. Oh, Jess barely fails. No! Oh, I knew it would be 15. Uh, okay, so that's... I yelled at Martha, don't get poisoned. <laughs> While you're more. waking up. <laughs> yeah. They got poisoned. Um, okay. So, um... All is one, uh, as one, one hit. You take 20 slashing and 22 poison damage. Oh. You mean I take 10 slashing and 11 poison damage? Yeah, so 21. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna get I'm never gonna stop doing that bit. No, it's 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 the best thing for the rogue. I'm just making sure I'm like Morthal's gonna die, but <laughs> Oh oh yeah, I would have died. Um <laughs> That's fine, I'm alive. Mm-hmm. Um Don't okay, tell so, the other ones that I'm nearly dead. Yeah, the other one is attacking now. Um Uh 22 to hit. Um... Uh Hang on, let me just yeah. double check. Um, yeah, it does. Can I? I'm gonna use um, Coil's tail. Uh -huh. um, if a creature you can see within 10 feet of you hits with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to swipe your tail and roll a d8. Does it have to be attacking me or can it be attacking somebody else? Read it one more time. It says, uh, if a creature you can see within 10 feet of you hits you, oh, okay, hits you with an attack okay. roll. Never mind. No. Only I, I had a tail. Damn. I. You know what? I, I like, I like, I like the idea of it. And since you're in close quarters, like you guys are snug back to back in this moment. I'm, I'm going to, mm. I'm going to give it. All right. So you have to roll a d8, right, and it, it minuses from their mm -hmm. attack. So they rolled a 22. A six. So 16. Does 16 hit? My AC 17. Okay. So Dang. their their attack goes wide. Nice. Wow. Woo Very nice. Um, now the two coming for Coil. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. 17 to hit on the first. Uh, yeah, that do hit. Can I use this multiple times, or do I have <laughs> uh, I think that was your reaction, reaction, right? Okay, yeah, yeah that's right, wants. that's right. Okay, so, um... 23... So... Uh, t uh 11? 11, uh, slashing, already reduced on the first hit. Alright. A and a natural in 20 on the second. Oof. Yep. 20 do hit. So 19. So and, and the second one hits you for 19. Already reduced. Okay. That is their turn. Uh Trilby, you wake up to what you what's just been described. Uh-huh. It's a good thing I'm already clutching my teddy bear slash arcane firearm. <laughs> <laughs> you would, yeah. He would. Yeah. Um, would would trying to wake up Gelneck be a bonus action? Is that what we... I'll say it as a free action, because he's right next to you. Free action? Okay. So then I'm going to attack first with that arcane firearm, and I'm going to fire off a shatter, which is a 10-foot radius sphere that I'm going to center, like, over over here somewhere, so it hits these two mm -hmm. and Just no one quick, else. Can you, can you read the description for shatter for me? 
Yeah, let me let me post it in the chat. Meh. Okay, I'm gonna give advantage to your your check, Gilnick. Okay. <laughs> advantage... I was gonna say. Yeah. If that doesn't wake him up or everyone else on the ship. Yeah. I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be pretty oh. loud. Yeah. Yeah. Gilnick, you this loud ringing suddenly <laughs> as you see this scene in front of you. Jumping, drink me, dog, just oh. oh ah. Okay, so and you wanted to just hit the the two, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. And that's um, DC con save. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a D twelve. I'm like, man, that's low. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Um, uh, fifteen and twelve. I think both fail. So six. Yeah, DC under. sixteen. Okay. And then bonus damage is the eight. I rolled an eight out of eight. Bonus damage is eight. Okay. Um. That top one. Which one was that? Uh. 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 Fourteen damage. Seventeen. Okay. 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 A lot of numbers. Um. Okay. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Um. So yeah, this this loud ring kind of comes out. The two of them kind of like hold their sides of their head for a moment. Um. And they, everyone, all four of them now are realizing like they're made. Like everyone's up. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, yeah. Trilby wakes up. Panic hits this tiny little symbol with his little teddy bear, and then le- flops over and reaches out to Gelnek, who's already awake. <laughs> I, I like to imagine like he's he's like just far away enough that he's like doing like like tip tip of his fingers, just like f- yeah, lap, lapping his hand. He's like, wake <laughs> up, wake up, wake up! I'm I'm rocking further away from him as I'm flailing over and falling out of the hammock. <laughs> oh, and uh, in case yeah, okay, you already did. Uh, I'll do the sun, uh, and we'll we'll just we'll just put you in now, Gelnick. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Gelnick, you're up. What are these creatures? Are these the rumored bed bugs that humanoids say appear every so often? No. <laughs> oh, good, because I was going to say that humanoids have much larger troubles than Gelnick initially thought. Otherwise, ah, smash! And I'm. Going to uh, smash him with a m- my uh, maraca hammer, the closest one nearby. Uh. Seventeen hits. Okay, let's see. Ha! That'll oh. be ten since I'm using one-handed. Nice. All right, he's looking rough. Then I will attack again. Yeah. 19 hits for another four. Oh, he's 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 hanging on. Then I will thread. use Fury of the Small as well, uh, which will deal an additional eight damage. He's done. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> has one HP. I love that. Fury what a good trait. It's so good. I like the really tiny text that says goblin. Yeah. <laughs> so goblin. you just like you hear this loud ringing noise sit up in bed and like with Warhammer just bonk, clonk this guy in the head out. Um, just bonk, yeah. bonk, scream. <laughs> uh, anything else for Geldek? I think I'm just gonna like walk on up next to this one just so I can be within range for more bonkage. Excellent. Alright. Uh, truly that was that was your turn waking up Geldek and stuff. Uh, yeah. Faley. Yes. You are up. I would love... Am I within touch range of um, Morenthal? Morenthal, yes, absolutely. Okay, I'd like to cure wounds then. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, for six. Thank you. <laughs> you got it, buddy. I, it helps. It helps. It helps. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's me. That's it? Mm-hmm. All right. Thompson, 
You were awake in bed. Very. I think Hobson was groggily trying to sort of like come to his senses and remember how to get out of the hammock. Uh, I think Trilby's shatter startled him so much that he both like instinctively cast armor of Agathus on himself and fell on the floor. Like fell out of bed. <laughs> Face <laughs> first just on the floor. Yeah, he just, ah! <laughs> just like is <laughs> panicked. Has armor on, but is trying to scramble to get at his sword and it like is packed down underneath the hammock where it all was. So <laughs> not very effective this turn, but awake. Excellent. I just I just love the idea of within half a second of you like open eyes. Ah! Immediately armor of Agathus and you're on the floor. Just <laughs> within half a second. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, anything else for Hobson? No, no, he's like, <laughs> uh, he's probably also feeling very tinnitus here right now. Just very, <laughs> it's been a very disorienting first eight seconds of being awake. Okay. Uh, <laughs> before you have your action here, Morenthal, um, Priscilla and Geo are awake. Um, and they, they don't have weapons at the ready, but they're just going to punch the two that are by you guys. Um, oh, yeah. So they, 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 will, they will give you flanking. Um, okay, uh, nothing from Geo. Oh, and, a, and one damage from Priscilla. She, she clocks him <laughs> in the back of the head. Get him. Gosh, give him a, like a finger flick to the back of the head. Yeah. Finger flick, uh, po poke his eyes out, slap him side to side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the finger one. Okay. Get All the right. cream pie. In um, the face. So, <laughs> Morthal, you are up. You have uh, flanking on that one south of you, and then all of them have been hurt at this point. That they have. Um, I'll go to the one directly beneath me. All right. I mean, well, advantage. they're all beneath. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wait, did you say with advantage? Yeah, you have advantage because Priscilla's helping you with flanking. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes, because we're flanking. You're right. Oh, God. And. Ooh. Okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Alright, sweet. We'll just go straight for him then. 25 hit for. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh, 23 damage? Damn. 23 finishes that one. Perfect. Then immediately I'm going to swing back around and go for the one next to Gelnick. Just offhand second dagger straight into him. I didn't mean to do advantage, but 20, but two piercing. Two piercing. Just like a swift moment of just like swinging around just to plunge it right in him. Okay. And then I end my turn. I'm realizing I forgot to add uh, Trilby's damage to this one. Uh, it was 14, right? I believe so. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, all right, Coil, you are up. Okay. You have advantage of the one south. We're going to go for that that one then. And he's looking pretty rough. So this um, is a... Oh, Coil is? Yeah. Oh. So he's gonna he's gonna reach for the greatsword again. And... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh. Uh. uh Twenty-seven damage on that one. Where's that? Oh. Uh, yep. Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he that. <laughs> he was only a little hurt, and he's he's looking not great now. Now he's a lot hurt. Yeah, he's a lot hurt now. All right. Then he go again. Yeah, and that, that second one, you just cleave through him. Like butter. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And that's his turn. Um. This. He is going to use his bonus action to disengage. One, mm. two, three, four, oh. five, six. <laughs> That's his turn. Wait, he I hasn't see. used his action. Sorry. 
One, Is two, dash? three, <laughs> four, five, and he jumps off of the ship. Oh shit! Oh. Does anyone get an attack of opportunity when he fails? Is that oh, a thing? He disengaged. Get? disengaged. Oh. Um, but he's 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 still visible if uh, if if people want to try for at least another round. So, uh, Gellick, you see him dart. Hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think I can catch up to him. Uh. Instead. I am going to uh, try and do a quiet little drummy doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, to give Morenthal an inspiration. Perhaps he can catch up, being the rogue that he is. Fingers crossed. And otherwise, I guess I'm going to just like use my action to dash, since the inspiration is a bonus action. Try and chase him down uh, just to right. have eyesight, eyeline of him. But otherwise not going to be able to do much with a bonus action. Okay. I you see sprint. you! <laughs> you see him running and he leaps off like as, as, you're, as you're coming up on that deck, you can still see him just starting to fade into the clouds. Um, okay, otherwise, that'll be my turn. Alright, Trilby. Uh, I'm going to pull up my socks and start running. Okay, yes, you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want to move me just the maximum? Because I don't know how to space it out with without the grid. Uh, my move speed is 30. You can use the little... Um, I can oh, see wait, a measure. The, yeah, so let's say, can... like... You, you get, oh, you get it basically circle. free 60, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so you'll you'll make it to the ledge easily. Okay. You can be right right up there. And I still have an that, action? That's your bonus that... action. Um, when you cast a spell, then as a bonus action on each turn, so until the spell ends, you can take the dash action. So, you, so yeah, that was your movement and you casting of that spell. Right, so now I can just yell at him. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I mean, you can, you're like, if you had something in your hand, you could throw it at him. You know, you, like, you yeah, still have your got action. Any physical weapons. Um, I mean, I have like, I think I have a dagger. Um, <laughs> I have a crossbow, but that would be like an action. Um, yeah, you have your action. You still you have, have your action. Oh, this, oh, this spell is a bonus action. But I had to cast the spell. The casting time is the bonus. Wait. Yeah, the casting yeah. time is what it requires. So it, you use the bonus action to cast it. Um, and then the spell gives you when you cast it, a, basically like a free dash. And then so it dashes I do on still your next have, turn. I can still do an attack. Yes. Yep. Okay. As long as it's not a spell. Yeah. Right. Um. Because you need concentration. Or you could do a cantrip, itself. like uh, like Ray of Frost or something. Like that. Yeah. Right. Um. He's he, is he is he is Ring of Frost gonna tap him? Seems like. Uh, what's what's the range on that? Is that thirty? Uh. Uh. Um. Sixty feet 60. range. We'll say I'll say sixty hits him. I say he's like at fifty as he leaps off. Okay. Well, this is like yeah. split second. You're going after it. You shoot this bolt after him. Sure thing. Yeah. And then Fifteen with, is his AC. And then with the uh, arcane firearm, D8 on top of that six. God. Him, made him. 16. It made him colder. Get back on the ship. We're not done with okay. you. Okay. <laughs> you you can still see he he seems conscious. Uh, he he's. He's not standing because he's he's falling. Is your name but... Steve? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else for Trilby? I think that's everything I can do. All right, Bailey. Um, it's, what's the deal with these guys off the ship? No, those they're they're, they're dead bodies around you. I just took them off because it was cluttering the battlefield. But they're all like dead right here. It's this one here. This is the one that just jumped off. He ran up the stairs and jumped off. Yeah. Is he He's the last vision? one. Of, if you get up here, yeah. But it's pretty right. far. Oh, I don't know that I could get it's up like there. It's like 60 feet. Yeah. Yeah. You basically need a dash. 
Well, one, then, um... At least one dash, two if you have a low... Then speed. I just... Healing... Cure wounds, Morinthal. Thank you. For love, then. There you go. Thank you. That's it. All right. <laughs> Hobson, on the floor. <laughs> you yeah, hear, I, as everyone starts rushing upstairs. Yeah, no, I think he's he's definitely not useful at this point. He's just halfway up like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he definitely doesn't get up. Yeah, it's because you're prone, so that's half dead. your movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's... <laughs> He's like on his feet by the end of his turn, but yeah. not useful. No, that's that's totally fair. That's totally fair. All right, um, back to the top, Morenthal. Uh, two questions, Dan. Mm -hmm. First one: How injured is he? Um, you know he was taking a beating. I'll say with he's below twenty hit points. I'll give you that, because he, he's taken a few hits. He took hits from Trilby Shatter. Um, and then that, that Ray of Frost did a chunky bit of damage to him. Is he falling slower because of the Ray of Frost, which slows down? <laughs> I would say no, speed. because it's not like his movement. Mm -hmm. Gravity. <laughs> that's I'll Ray down. of Frost myself, so I'll take less fall damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything, it would probably speed him up, wouldn't it? <laughs> um... I well, I guess I have three questions then. Mm -hmm. Second question: Do we? This is more to everyone, I guess. Um, would we want him alive? I don't think we're thinking through things like that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 this problem that I'm thinking of because I'm like, I have an idea and I don't want to execute it, but I I'm stupid enough that I would. Um, third question. On my run up through here, is there any rope that I see, Dan? Um, give, well, give me a, a, a perception with advantage. You know the ship, but this is just in the panic of the moment. 19. You can find some rope easily on the way. As I'm running up, I'm going to tie it around my waist, one end of it around my waist, and then oh. just jump off. Okay. Is, can can I make any kind of an attempt to grab the end of the uh, rope? Give me a, implying a, that everyone, people yeah, that are already me, there, are going to grab it. Saving throw, uh, Trilby or Gelnick or both. You, yeah, you, I would, you I both would notice just, the rope. Please. Ten. I mean, I can I can flash of genius that. Uh, so fifteen. Fifteen is good enough. Gelnick, you grab the rope. There's a little bit of uh, like a, a rope burn as you get it, but you kind of stabilize yourself, put your feet against the the bridge, and like kind of wait for the slack to run out. I'm gonna. Just, just, yeah, like, I, I, I take large like, full on, like <laughs> pin diving, <laughs> trying to catch up to him, and just as soon as I get to him, just grab and hold tight. Okay, give me a um. We'll say with you with the the and the intent and speed of falling because this is all like this is all of this is happening in six seconds. Like him running, you mm -hmm. following. Yeah, this after is a very quick decision. So first, give me give me just a a straight, um, either athletics or acrobatics for for catching up acrobatics to him in this is. fall. Okay, sixteen. You catch up to him now. Give me um an athletics check versus him. This will be for the grapple. Oh god, here we go. Remember, you're inspired. Twenty-three. Oh, not needed. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. I rolled. I rolled a natural eighteen, so it was gonna be high. Um, wow. You Ooh. grab onto him, and you've got him locked. I, on it. At this point, I'm just holding on and waiting for either the the rope to, waiting for the rope to either go really taut or really slack. Okay. Um, coil. <laughs> Koyo is honestly like his his main purpose was to keep them from killing anybody here and you know he considers that achieved at the moment and mm -hmm. he's not feeling great so he's probably just gonna like 
do a like stab the stab the sword into the ground and use it as a support and take a knee. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Um so for the sake cuz we can we can say combat's over. You have this guy grappled. You're both falling. Yep. Um I will say uh as in this moment, it's just you and Trilby, uh, Gelnek. Um, the slack runs out. You catch um, both of you or one of you, whichever. You can either give someone advantage or both of you roll. It'll be an athletics check. Or actually, would it be a strength saving throw? Your call. Strength saving throw or athletics check. I would say it's probably Gelnek's roll. Okay, but so you want to give Gelnik advantage? I, I have minus two to strength, so either right. way, I'm not likely to help so much. So you're, you're helping there, but it's it, most of the, the impact is on Gelnik. Okay. Yeah, so I'm happy said, to flash of genius it, though. Mm -hmm. You said um, choice of strength saving throw or athletics? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with athletics. <laughs> like wrestling drakes, albeit they put on a bit of weight. Oh, <laughs> Plus five, plus five, fifteen. Oh, you have you have had, you have advantage on this. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you have right. advantage. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, that would 17. be a seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, you you slow the fall and you you catch, and you're starting to slip. Like you you have them for this moment. Um, we'll do another quick check here of just you you have him. Um, another athletics check. Uh, from Gelnek uh, with advantage, and then I'll also need an athletics check from Morenthal. Mm -hmm. As, I only as have, now, I, time I only have passing. one more flash of genius use. <laughs> Just <laughs> you know, down to one more. So uh, also remember, Morenthal, you still have. Your I do have the bardic inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably gonna use. Okay, Gelnick admits he didn't wrestle drakes. They were just very large lizards. <laughs> you want athletics from me, Dan? Yes. D do I need a flash of genius? Oh, that? Uh -oh. Well, well. Oh. Hang on. Uh, I, I get to add the D8. Yep. Yeah, this this is these are this is important. I'm not considering that a, a, a fail. I'm looking specifically for numbers. Ooh. Eleven. Eleven. Ooh. With modifiers, I rolled a 10 for this guy Whoa. squeezing out of you. So you still have him. Gelnik, are, 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 are you getting Flash of Genius? Uh, Am I? I, think I? I think I should, yeah. Okay, with, okay. with, with in, in that quick moment, Trilby, you see Gelnik starting to slip and his, his, his feet that are like keeping him against the, the, the baseboard are starting to rise up. And in that moment, you kind of quickly tie a, a, the, a bit of loose rope to to something affixed there and keep Gelnek from falling off the edge. You have stabilized <laughs> Morenthal and this this prisoner. Um, Jesus. With with those checks over the next few seconds, uh, I think people come upstairs. Uh, <laughs> there's a bit of a commotion going on um, and you you get Morenthal and this this figure on board. Wow, that was um, incredibly <laughs> snug rolls there. It was very that snug. Was tight. That's D and D. Yeah. Oof. Fucking Gelnek holding on to the rope like Mantis from the first Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> It's too, that's too much suspense. No ace attorney suspense. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> that's for the interrogation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. um, over over the next like few minutes, you kind of, I, I imagine you guys tie this up. Uh, there, there's enough of you versus this one individual. They are not a threat. Um, they they know they're caught. Um, they are definitely looking for any attempt to escape, but. I think with your relation to the blood letters, Morenthal, you know what he's going to try, if anything. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll say like over the next few minutes, what what do you guys do in that moment? I imagine uh, Gelnek, Trilby and Morenthal are dealing just with this prisoner. Um, I think Ardwell is awake at this point and he probably is helping you. Um, 
downstairs, Gio and uh, Priscilla are checking in on everyone. Like, is everyone okay? What the fuck was that? Um, but they kind of they kind of go upstairs once uh, they say they see everyone's kind of okay. Um, as soon as Trilby has free hands, because he's not a very strong boy, uh, he's gonna head downstairs and uh, try to help patch up Coil. Okay. Aww. Uh, have some cure wounds. Thank you. Oh, bless. That's more HP than he had. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. <laughs> you want more? I can give you more. I'm, doing, I'm gonna give you another level one. Eh. All right. Yay, thank you. Hopefully that's just enough for now. I'm gonna keep some spell slots just in case. <laughs> Fair. Please do. That, that should be good. I, wait, I can give you some healer B. Hold on. And then it's fine. I'm sure he can, like, short rest or something. Here, just one, use... just one, he, yeah. one spritz from the healer B. <laughs> okay. Um, what is that? Um, da, 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 da. that's the uh, 1d6. Awesome. Um, yeah, he was in no, the single just, digits. <laughs> just oh. one extra. <laughs> you know, we take those. Yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> it just kind of buzzes around your head and just kind of light little mist just on the side of Coil's head. <laughs> little spritz. Just a little, little... He, yeah. he, he thanks, Trilby. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Alright, so downstairs with uh, with Trilby, Coil, Homps, and Faley, what are you four up to in this these, these yeah. sudden moments after the fact? We know what Trilby's up to. I think Faley's probably still very confused. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think once Coil is feeling uh, well enough, he will he will start going up the stairs to see what what's happening upstairs. I'm really glad that Trilby never got attacked because he definitely does not sleep in his armor. <laughs> He sleeps in like, like you know, you know, like the old timey uh, pajamas with like the butt flap. <laughs> oh my god! That's, that's what he sleeps in. Like. A candle candlestick step and then the mm -hmm. long hat. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I imagine that doesn't have a very high AC. Yeah, he's yeah, also gonna make her way upstairs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now that Hobson's on his feet and a, armored yeah. and awake and half deafened, he's. <laughs> Definitely not going back to sleep tonight, so he just <laughs> goes up stairs and tries to like see if he could make coffee for everybody in the in the kitchen or something. Okay. Um so the, the lot of you are in the, the kind of common room. Um this was this this blood letter is 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 tied up. Morenthal, um Do you do you Pull down mask. Look at this person's face or anything, or do you do you care? Um, if we're alone, yes. If uh, if there's anyone else in the room, then I won't. Oh but no, if, it's, if it's every, moment, everyone's in this room. Like I imagine you're in the <clears throat> yeah yeah main um, quarters where you are. I probably right won't then. Okay, I, I probably won't because there's still like some type of baseline respect there. Um, they they kind of are just like wordlessly sitting, putting up with you guys um like i imagine there was probably like some brief questions as that came up but he's not responding to anything yet if you'd like to talk to him though he's you have him captured yeah i i'll be honest i was holding my breath for most of that <laughs> <laughs> i would that i that was i was not expecting you guys to catch him that was great oh <clears throat> hold out all the stops mm. Jesus, yeah. Um, what was gonna happen if if Coil and Mornthal didn't notice anything? Were we just all gonna get stabbed to death in our sleep? Um, you all would be hit with critical hits with a uh, five d six plus three plus seven d six poison damage, then crit on top of that. So yes. So Lord. yeah, it probably would have been bad. Oh, I'm glad you guys rolled good perception. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess, I guess first things first, I, w I would kind of, 
not really ask, more demand that someone check out the cargo hold and see how they got on board. Um, uh, just both to try and solve that problem and also to try and thin out how many people are in the room. Okay. Um, not, not to get rid of everyone, just to get rid of at least most of the people. Um, because he kind of knows that, like, the, the useless questions of, like, who sent you, why are you here, it's like, they, it's obvious. It, it, I mean, they were here to kill us. It, it doesn't really matter why. Um, it, what more matters is... <laughs> what more matters is how they got on board mm -hmm. to him, and if they had help. So I guess that's that's what I'm trying to... I'll try and pull out of him as if, if, if they were working alone or if someone on the ship has betrayed us in some okay. fashion. Um, Ardwell just goes like, I'll go let the captain know what's happening. Um, let me know if you have, if you need anything. Um, he steps out to the side and then uh, Geo and uh, Priscilla head downstairs um, after you ask for someone to go. They just they just kind of immediately bolt. Um, but before oh. Mornthal starts sort of interrogating, mm -hmm. um, can I can I offer to Mornthal my ring of the handshake? <laughs> Absolutely. In case you want to, it's advantage on charisma while you're shaking their hand. <laughs> I am <laughs> just gonna look at it. Just, just sort of look at the guy we have tied up, where his arms are very clearly not accessible. And I just... imagine they're bound at his sides. Yeah, he can maybe I... reach down and grab it. I don't know. I'm a... <clears throat> you know what, Trilby? You know what, Trilby? You keep it. I might okay. need some help with this interrogation. I, well, I've never been part of an interrogation before. This is the That's perfect the good cop, bad cop buddy. pairing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nuts. Coil will uh take up the, the job of going down and checking on the cargo hold. Okay. With them. What is what is Gelnick up to? Gelnick is going to observe. He's not in the right headspace to uh, interrogate since this guy inadvertently caused him rope burn on his hands. So he's just kind of like <laughs> rubbing his hands. Oh, ah, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Wait, I have a healer bee for that. <laughs> um, And Faley, what's Faley up to? Oh, well, you got a good healer bee roll. Uh, oh, Faley's okay. very I, curious I, who's there. So she's probably watching very closely. I okay. didn't actually need it, but I still appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> it's like just it's not for the HP, it's for the, the in-universe healing. Ooh. Um, Gelnick, since you're kind of just kind of scoping out the situation, give me a either an investigation or an insight check. Ooh. Let's do insight. Oh, yeah. That'll be an eleven, Chief. Um It's obviously tense. Um as as this this moment is you're one thing just catches it kind of rubs you weird is the entire time everyone's been in here uh great and still just cooking <laughs> yeah i'm suspicious of that little shit um as it's you notice this um you look coil you join geo and priscilla downstairs um you open up the, the, the cargo door hold, um, and you can see this massive room. There's there's a few boxes that are kind of just there that you've seen before just walking about the ship, your normal supplies and stuff. And you can see this one box um, that has been, like, it's it's a larger crate than the rest. Like, it's it's a, it's a sizable thing, like you would fit something, you know, large in it. And there's, there's various supplies that are probably inside it. But it's kind of tipped over to the side, and you can see the, the the fastenings that keep it, you know, attached to the floor so it doesn't slide around are undone. And immediately you notice on the floor of the ship is a uh, large, maybe like five foot diameter circle of glyphs and arcane symbols. Mm. Coil will have no idea what these are, but... Um, Geo and Priscilla kind of note that and just like 
They they go like Priscilla sits down and rubs her hands, and you can see it's kind of like a almost like a chalk. Um, like she can smear it, and she's just like, I, "This this is new." Didn't it? There was that one guy when we were boarding who said that he brought on extra cargo, didn't he? Well, yeah, but he, I mean, he was supposed to, he was in charge of it for this outing, but I, 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 she kind of seems at a loss and then like angrily stands up. I think we What's need to give again? him a talk. Rayton? Quill nods and she, she starts to storm off, and, and Gio's just kind of watching the two of you. Yeah. Quill come up. Uh, he scruffed this man. <laughs> <laughs> um. You go to scruff this man, and your hand passes through him. Son of a... God damn it. Oh... He swats through it. Yeah. Kind it's, of cursing. It, it, it is just a, a a noiseless, soundless illusion as your hand swats through him. As for the rest of you who were, were watching this interrogation, or supposed interrogation, uh, the room's cleared out a little. Um, you probably have a few moments where there's no other deckhands other than your own party, um, Morenthal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so like, in, in, we'll, we'll say this is the moment where like, Gio and Priscilla are downstairs with Coil. Okay. Um, in, the, in that case, while, while he's sort of waiting for answers of how he got downstairs, he'll just kind of, kind of get up in, in not too close to, to the guy, but just just enough to where it's like only only he and Trilby can really hear him because Trilby's still close, um, mm -hmm. and in just sort of matter of fact ask like, how did you get on board? There's a there's a circle below deck. Hmm. You have help. Yeah. Don't know. They were disguised. That's a cop out. You know how. What it sort is. of disguise? Uh, magical. I don't know. We didn't. We. You know we don't give a shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> they paid the money, gave us the target, supplied us with the fucking scroll. How much money? Seventeen hundred. Hmm. Just one target, or all of us? He uh, he gestures to his uh, like side pocket. I'm gonna nod to Trilby to just sort of let him go towards it. M me? Yeah. What if there's poison in there? Is there poison in there? <laughs> he shakes. I'm just gonna look out. back towards him and just like. Just ed entertain the thought of Trilby. <laughs> just like, is a... He shakes his head. Like an op open mouse trap in your pocket? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> he giggles <laughs> as your hand is snapped, and he's like, ha, I got you, and then dies. No. Uh, <laughs> Alright, I'll reach into that pocket. Um, you find a, a kind of rolled up piece of parchment. Um, and do, do you look at it, or do you just hand it over? I just hand, hand it to Morenthal. Trilby is extremely uncomfortable reaching into a bound man's pockets, and just <laughs> this entire situation is very awkward for him. I'll carefully unfurl it. You see a uh, kind of well rendered version of the six members of the Flower Crowns. Hmm. Cute. How good are they? Are they like flattering? 
I, yeah, it's it's probably like your typical one. It's like nothing's exaggerated. It's not like caricatures or anything like that. Um, it, it's it's enough for you to immediately recognize yourself. If if not mm -hmm. like artistic, though, you know. I, I am picturing, you know, like the the art some people get on their cars of like, here's our family with like these little stick figures. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's mom and dad, yeah. the two kids, yeah. and the dog. It's like that. Mm hmm. Um. Okay. In that case, uh, he'll he'll just stand there for a second and just have a think, and then just go. So you're painful up front. Shakes his head. No. Ah. So what was the plan then? Well, I mean, come on board, take you in the middle of the night, leave. Hmm. The same way you came in, I assume? No, no you uh, hmm. interrupted that. Yeah, I'll say. So where were you going to go then? After? Home? Right, what do you mean? Before I caught you. Oh. Yeah, down down to the ground. Good. You're huh. just gonna look around just like, have we gotten everything? Do we need anything more from it? How are you gonna land on the ground? Painfully. Not really, actually. We, oh. got, we got these, uh, and he kind of, he kind of shuffles to his other side hip, um, and you can see fast, and there is a, a, a thin wand. Ah. Uh, kind of a wand is that? Is it some feather fall or something? Do you, do you say that? Yeah. <laughs> as soon as He's you say that, he goes. a bad cop. <laughs> he goes, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's what I thought. He looks over and winks at Morenthal. <laughs> You're doing great, buddy. <laughs> He's a quick learner. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gesture to Trilby to take the wand. I will slowly walk over and grab the wand. And you have a a wand of Featherfall with three charges. This means that all the bodies down there probably do have one of these. Well, probably. they're still on the ship. They are on the ship, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they, they all do. Um. Um. <laughs> In that case, I'm gonna turn around again and ask either Gelnick or, or Faley to check where we are. Like, what we're above right now in the general area. Yeah, he'll... We'll look over the edge. Let's have a look like, over the edge. Mold, are we? Let's see. Hmm. You guys are probably like right around North Des Duskern kind of area. Hmm. Still on course. The Southern oh, Far cool. Reach Mountains. Don't see a lot of large bodies of water that were immediately over. <laughs> or big cushions. Big cushions. Uh, that would be what the feather falls for, Troby. Oh. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could jump off the edge now if you want, but... Maybe later. Maybe later. You hear uh, kind of like um, um, amongst just kind of like coughing of, of injuries. He just you, you softly only probably so you can hear Morenthal. Um, the others mm -hmm. you could perception if you want to listen, but you can hear him talking. Um, he just goes, listen, Morenthal, I, I know how this goes, but we can work something out here. I can. I can make sure I break the trail. Crater Fist doesn't have to know anything. 
we both know he'll know. We're far beyond that. Oh, you think he sent me? No. Oh. So it's... you do know. Oh, I, I, I warned you. Where was your rendezvous when you hit the ground? Well, uh, assuming we're not too far from Duskern. Probably mm -hmm. just walk in there, get a carriage back to Northcliff, collect the bounty. Is Fabi hearing us, from? by the way? Oh, yeah. Um, You'd probably hear this, but... You can hear him talking. I think he's he's trying to be <clears throat> hushed right now, so... um, either, either you can just get up in his face, or from where you are, you can perception check with advantage. Because I'm curious if she heard the I warned you, because she definitely would react to that. I think that that was when he was very much trying to make it so just I could hear. So I think Dan said you'd have yeah. to have perception for that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll. Do yeah, because I don't think Trilby heard that. No, but he wouldn't care. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> he you wouldn't can, react. <laughs> you can hear Fairly this. locked in. Yeah. What does he mean that he warned you? It's nothing. I don't... I don't think it is. It's not the most pressing thing right now. Wait, huh? I warned you of what? You still he warned you that this was gonna hers? happen and that's not the most pressing thing right now? What do you mean? Did you know this was gonna happen, Morenthal? I'm just gonna stare at the, the guy we've got tied up because I knew he, this is what he wanted. As... as as you're staring at him, he looks over to Faley and goes, You still haven't collected hers? My what? Don't. I'm not doing that. He just kind of like leans back hard against the wall. Just trust me, it's nothing, Bailey. Bailey's just kind of staring, trying to process, and not really, doesn't really know what to say next, so she just kind of stares at him. He, he, he's gonna kind of want to say something to Bailey, but I'm just gonna turn around and go, where were you meant to meet in Northcliffe? Uh, O'Brien's Tavern. Any contact? Uh, Name? No. no. What were you to look out for? Um, about maybe just under six foot, robed figure, pointed ears, maybe half elf elf. Um, their face was obscured and disguised, not really sure, but... We knew. Of course. Always do. How do you want this to end? I mean, you know how I want this to end. Me walking out of here, but I don't think that's happening. So how is this ending? It, it ends with us uh, turning him into the authorities, Morenthal. Oh, that's a good Not idea. Even I'm just not even looking at Trovi when he says that. <laughs> Morenthal? Trovi, this is only going to end one way. The way we got that the information we need. We can't leave him alive. Maybe I don't want to know, and I'm going to go mop up some blood. I'm sleepy. You go do that, buddy. I'm going to I'm gonna turn back to him and just go... 
Because I, I, I assume it is Malachi. It's you're you uh, this close enough. His 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 voice, uh, the 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 subtle shifts in his movement and eyes. It's Malachi. Yeah. I. I'm just gonna look back at him and just. Anything else we should know? Uh, no. But like I said, this you being here was just a sweetened version of the pot. This wasn't a hit from Yul. <laughs> well, I guess I still have that to look forward to. Yeah. I guess I'm sorry it had to end like this. It's this line of work. It'll be the death of us all. Just business. And as he says, just business, I'm going to pull out a dagger and put it straight into his heart. <laughs> Wait, yeah. May I? Just business. Oh. May Gilnek, this is up to you above game, um, mm -hmm. Gam, if you would allow for Gelnek to attempt to stop Morenthal. Absolutely. Go for it. All right. Gelnek is going to stop Morenthal. And like hold on to his arm with the dagger. What are you doing? We spoke before that you are a different person, that you are not the same as before, and therefore it is no longer this line of work, correct? <laughs> it doesn't matter if <laughs> it's going to keep chasing me. That is true. But perhaps I, I don't know. I feel as though if you do this, then it is the same as before. Gelnick, if anything, I'm doing him a kindness. He's failed. He hasn't killed us. If he leaves here alive, he goes back, he'll be disgraced. He'll be hunted. Killing him here now is the best thing for him. I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit familiar to me. Yeah, well... Maybe I am. You! And he looks at the the tied-up guy. He stares back. You truly believe this is just business. No hard feelings, nothing personal. And that, perhaps, on the other side of things, you would have done the same? Uh, yeah, it's... I mean, he didn't say anything wrong. It's not like I'm gonna be welcomed with open arms. If anything, if you do let me out of this alive, I gotta just go on the run like this guy. And Gelnek just kind of looks at Morenthal, almost like with it, with a mm hmm. You know, for how very skilled you assassins are, they never taught you anything about uh, empathy. It's kind of detrimental he laughs. to the job. <laughs> There's like a hard so, like both, from like both of us have like a. Like a, like a weird, like, almost bonding moment of, like, this, like, what he just said the most ridiculous fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, no duh. Yes, perhaps it is naive for me to think so, but look how much trouble it's gotten you into. We're still alive because of it. At what cost, Morenthal? Maybe keeping you all alive is worth the cost. I do not mean to bring up old wounds, Morenthal, but... I was mostly referring to the path that has led you here beforehand. And that is not me having a slight towards you. But simply to understand that there are other ways. 
I, for one, believe in second chances. That is why, after learning of, of your history, I still stand by you, for you have proven yourself. Perhaps it can be the same for this. This one. Fine, then. Put it, put it to him. What do you want, Malachi? He kind of hangs his head for a bit. I mean... You know how it is leaving. It's like a pipe dream. You don't just get to do that. Yeah, I can go on the run, but... I mean... I guess... I could try. Then... What if you did not? What if, instead, there was another potential line of work for you to pay off a different debt? One that does not re require your death sentence if you are to fail, but simply somewhere, well, a bit more secure and not going to kill you afterwards if you fail. You have my attention. Now, it will not be easy. I don't think there is a single person on this ship that likes you. <laughs> That's fair. They shouldn't. But, as said before, Galnek believes in second chances. And that you making it this far means you have some strong ability and could be of use to us. You're not suggesting. I am at least not demanding. <laughs> I may be double leader, but I also want to take into consideration all of our options. Especially with the line of work that we are in now. All the work, all the help that we could get. But Gilnek is still fairly a bit an outsider when it comes to the customs of humanoids around here. And perhaps he may be a bit more soft uh, when it comes to moral standards. We may discuss with the rest of the group first. <laughs> he, it, it's it's such a ridiculous notion to him that he's he, he's just willing to give like let Gelnek run with this. Just like sure, fine. If you want to talk to everyone, it it's not going to result in what you think it will, but sure, fine. Then it will be on my head. We're on our corpses. Uh, he'll look over at Faley. Faley, how do you feel about this possible course of action? I want to know what he was talking about before. <sighs> before I make any decisions. I can tell you all about it. How could you? Yeah. What do you want to know? Everything. All right. Uh, maybe two months ago, I visited your good friend Morenthal here in Phil Grove. Uh, I thought he was coming after your bounty because you had a pretty price on your head, and you still do. Last time I checked. Uh, and I was giving him the clear that you were already taken care of, as far as I knew. Taken care of? I it's, it's 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 rude in the in the guild to uh, go after someone's target if they're already involved. So there was someone coming after me, and you never thought that was a good thing to mention. Hey, l listen, I. I... I just... If, I just figured if everyone thought I was going after you, they wouldn't. And then I... Yeah, I, I just... I was trying to protect you, I guess. Bailey seems to relax a little bit, like, realizing that, I mean, she is alive. Uh... Asterisk, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Different, but alive. Not from Morenthal's doing, though. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't so, want to. Uh... Unrelated asterisk. <laughs> he, you he all did. backed off because he had the hit already. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. I was coming for your head. I bumped Bailey into Morithal and uh, backed off. And so did the rest of the guild. That is until our good friend, Mr. Yul Craterfist, let us know you were a deserter. And that whole thing happened. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Personally, I don't see any value of keeping him around. Sorry, Galnak. That is okay. Thank you for your honesty. And Yelnek will look at the prisoner. Well, I am trying, but, uh... <laughs> doesn't look good for you. Admittedly. I appreciate it. Yelnek, defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the ace attorney music. Real quick, <laughs> before we continue, I just realized it's past two hours. Let's do a quick little BRB. Take a, yep. take a quick little five-minute pee break. Uh, and, uh, quarters and recess. Yeah, quarters and recess. Uh, everyone go and get your coffee, everyone. chips, discuss, uh, have those cool Ice moments cream. in Better Call Saul, and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Better Call Gelnick. Oh, I'm back, chat. I had to pee so bad. You don't know. You don't know how bad I had to pee. I had to pee so bad I'm out of water. I'm going to refill my water, too. <laughs> Hang on. I'm back. I had to pee so bad, man. Woo. Woo. I can't believe they caught they caught him. That was great. That was incredible. That was very tense. Also, yeah, that was gonna be really bad if uh Coil and Morenthal did not one roll high and also two check out the noise.
But the question is, who wants the flower crowns dead? Who's after these idiots? <laughs> I love these idiots. I love them so much. Dan wanted a TPK. Never. I want a drama. That's what I want. Everyone wants them dead. Accurate. I'm back with ice cream. Oh, hello, Oosh. me back too. <laughs> what flavor, flavor you got? Yeah. Uh, mint chip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Classic. Mm hmm. Hagen Dazs, mm. very good. Okay. Are we, are we all back or is, is, is Dan still? I am here. Dan might here be well. AFK still. Mr. Dan. Mr. Dan. I was I was remarking after you muted that the visual is so funny to me of the, the, this guy bails and Gelnick and Troby chase after him. Troby manages to get off a little spell and then just Mornthal goes flying overboard with a rope attached. It was and incredible. Just, just immediately panic like, uh, uh, grab it. That was, that was so and, cool. and I, was, I was I was like, I'm I'm glad. Because my thought process was, oh, this would be a dumb idea. And then it was like, wait, it's a dumb idea he would actually do. And I'm like, wait, he actually legitimately would because he has enough trust in Gelnek and Trollby now that they would catch the rope. <laughs> yeah, like, this, is, this is how he tells them he loves them. The nicest thing that Morinthal has ever done is jump off an airship. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have a Dan back? I'm back. Sorry, hey. my cat's so mad the door's been closed. Oh no! <laughs> it's still closed, and she's still upset about it, but she's on this side now. <laughs> Forever upset. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're all back. You guys uh, continue this interrogation as uh, as as Gelnik is attempting to <laughs> keep Maliki alive. Um. Well, or at least loosely. See, loosely. see the value in having yeah, a mouth. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah. I, we don't have to role play it out. But Gelnick would present this op potential option to the rest of the crew as well to um, Hobson, uh, uh, Coil, and Trilby. But like, also let them know that uh, the two people that it's most involved with, Faley and Morenthal, have made their decision that he can't live. And see what their opinion on this is. Trilby is going to be appreciative towards Gelnick, but he he said his piece. He's he's firm in his resolve that the the the, the crown's guard, the, the the justice of the land, is the path. Hmm. Trilby has faith. Yeah, yeah, he do. Yeah. Of which Gelnick would agree at the very least, even if he doesn't work with us, he should go so as to not continue this killing cycle. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Trilby would be in favor of having him help us after trying to kill us. He wouldn't really be able to grapple with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it meant him not being murdered by Morinthal, then like very, very maybe, but he'd be upset about it. But gotcha. less upset than if than if he got murdered. Yeah. Give That's me, why he's um, down below slopping, uh, clean, trying to clean up this mess. We'll say it's as you guys time. are kind of like discussing this and everything with uh, Malachi and everything, uh, give me an insight check and, and I can give you just some extra information from the conversations. Yeah, everyone? Yes, everyone, if you want. <laughs> Not um, a... Whoops. I don't think Trilby would try to incite him. It's not so He's much of assassin. like trying to uh, yeah. like glean stuff. It's more of just kind of like what you're feeling from the, the vibe. The, of the vibe, right. yeah. Fair enough. Um, oh. <laughs> Morenthal's <laughs> already made up his mind. Morenthal <laughs> knows what Morenthal knows. Um, so, uh, so Trilby, uh, Faley, you pick up on this a little bit. Coil, this is like very clear to you of just like the matter of fact kind of nature of of 
the work Morenthal and, and Malachi come from, you know if he gets freed, he is not an, a threat to your party at all. It's more so the fact that they did, he did just try to assassinate you all, and there's there's no mistaking to that. Um, and the fact that he will be an outcast now in the Blood Letters for not only failing his missions, but fleeing and surviving. Um, that is easy enough for you to pick up on from the conversation that's happening. What Whatever you want to do with that is fine, but you can, you can kind of get that vibe of the conversation between Morenthal and Malachi and the little bits of information that have kind of come out. Mm-hmm. It was strictly professional. Yeah. Just business. Yeah, that doesn't change how Shelby feels, unfortunately. And that's totally fair. I'm just letting you know, like, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially he's Coyle was not, gets, he's like, gonna this He's going to backstab across. us. Yeah, yeah he, he has no reason sure. to backstab you. Yeah. That's not even yeah. on Shelby's mind. He's like, he tried to kill us. He should be in jail. That's it. Right. That is his lens of the world. I think Whatever. knowing this, Coyle is kind of, like, he's he's neutral. He's, he would be... He is actually fairly receptive to him working on the ship, but he also says he'll, like, go with whatever everyone's, like, sentiment is since he can't, you know, account for the fact of people's feelings and, you know, how they might feel about it His and being comfortable with that mm. on the ship. What are Hobson's feelings on the matter? I think Hobson likes the the idea of being merciful definitely appeals to Hobson, especially because I think he's been thinking a lot about our need to sort of recruit and get stronger for the bigger uh, challenges and bigger tasks that lie ahead of us. Uh, but I think he also feels like the people and it's like the, his fellow flower crowns are more experienced, more streetwise, more aware of the ramp, like. He trusts their judgment or on something like this much more than his own, based on his limited experience with this sort of this whole situation and this side of life in the world. So he's a uh, he he trusts what uh, his party comes to, especially the more more experienced members of it. Sounds like a hung jury to me. <laughs> so yeah, Kilnick is going to apologize to Morenthal for stalling his. Uh, original wish and just kind of shrug his shoulders at the prisoner it, it, while this is going on he's he's just sort of been thinking to himself of just like like it, it, the sort of like Gelnex infected him of just like oh man maybe we shouldn't kill him god damn it I, uh... I, I will not judge you for your decision uh, perhaps you will forgive me for perhaps this line of thinking coming from being someone who understands what it's like to be exiled and have no place to go. Personally, I think he would be a good ally. Perhaps not directly. A Trilby may be very uncomfortable. Even just out in the world. It doesn't have to be here. Yeah. We know he's forced to not work with them, so he's the only person we really know outside of you that... I can tell you right now, if we let him go, chances are he'll probably be dead within a while. And and then he sort of looks at Malachi and just goes, Maybe two weeks. Oh, so you're better than me? I've survived this long. He rolls his eyes and just sits back against the wall. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if we drop him off like this and injured, then probably. If we keep him with us... I I don't see him. He, he's already been 
disgraced by this. He can't turn around, finish the job still, and get away with it. The disgrace has already happened. The only reason he'd kill us would be for personal vengeance, and as long as I've known him, he doesn't... He hasn't really had that. Always about the job, aren't you? He, he, he nods his head, and he's doing the, like, nod where he, like, hits the back of his head against the wall. <laughs> just kind of like, he's just kind of waiting. What do you want, Malachi? Do you want to be set free? Do you want to be set loose by yourself? Or do you want me to just kill you now? You know, I think initially I probably would have wanted you to just kill me. But now I kind of want to do better than you. <laughs> <laughs> You give me, maybe give you a shot. See how long I last out there. He, he, he can't help but like, kind of admire the 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 way he's treating it. Of, and is just like, sure, fine. We won't kill him. You want off here? Uh, I mean, where are you going? Bright coin. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to tell him, but sure, Coil. Yeah, we're going to Bright Coin. I don't have really have a lot of good contacts in there. If, if you, I could just, if you give me back the wand, I could just jump off board. Sure, Troby. Troby's blow decks. Yeah. <laughs> Just like look behind him, see Troby's gone. Can someone get Troby? I will get Troby. <laughs> Gilnick will go explain the situation to Trilby and ask him. Oh, I need I need help with all these bodies, double leader. <laughs> oh, very well. Uh, we can carry and talk, <laughs> or drag and talk. <laughs> Just or... some wholesome bonding as we drag a body up the stairs. <laughs> Roll and talk. <laughs> <laughs> and explain the situation and the plan uh -huh. to potentially yeah. let him off um, since he's not a threat to us, but he could what? potentially be of use to us uh, far away from us. But he tried to kill us. That is true. Of... But so did Morenthal at one point. At yeah, sort that... of. Well. Uh... Right? Sure. Am I remembering that wrong? Probably. Not actively kill you, but <laughs> I guess passively in the beginning. Okay. A murder Depending on life. whether that's correct or not, I may rescind that. I... He's definitely He, he to takes no offense killed. to it. Mm -hmm. he, he wouldn't take any offense to it either way. Mm -hmm. I feel like he, throughout our entire adventures, if like Trilby's about to walk into a cobweb, Morenthal wouldn't say anything, you know, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't mind Trilby inconveniencing himself when Morenthal could help. Well, Trilby's just gonna hand over the wand and go stomp him back downstairs. <laughs> he doesn't like bodies. it, but he's glad that he's gonna not be murdered by us. <laughs> hey, well, I guess if you want to get off here, we'll try and make Why was five bodies look like six, I guess. Why was there blood on Trilby's hands? Oh, well, some, uh, some cleaning up. He's a very tidy boy. <laughs> I should probably help him. Yeah, I want to grab the bodies. Help Trilby. Yeah. Gelnick is going to hand him the wand. You have been given a second chance by Morthal. Consider it a blessing. I, I, I appreciate it. And also, don't worry about trying to make it look like I was there. If you guys aren't dead by the time you get back to Northcliff, then I don't get paid anyway, so pretty sure they're gonna know. 
So you don't want at least a few days start? Well, uh, I mean, don't turn around I to mean, Northcliffe right now. I guess that's my best shot. Okay. Good luck then. And he's just gonna <clears throat> start un untying the ropes. Yeah, he kind of like rubs his wrist um, after untying it, starts to walk into the ledge, pulls out the wand, and he goes, Friendly point of advice. Probably is not going to help you, but for your friend. Maybe swing by O'Brien's mill when you get back. Um, mm. I don't know if you ever worked directly out of Northcliffe, but O'Brien's got um, uh, a way with the books, we'll say, for at least hits. He could maybe make something happen with that. You're fucked, but Thanks. The heads so up. am I. Yeah, we both knew that, though. Yeah. Well. Have a good life. Same to you, Morthal. And he... He he T-poses and falls back into the, the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping repeatedly. What style? Mm -hmm. <laughs> While he's falling, Gelnick is going to send him a message. Okay. Ooh. Uh, and he's gonna say this is your only second chance don't waste it and just as as he fades into the clouds and then the, the, the distance is just about gone you just hear you got it You solved my assassin puzzle. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Incredible. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's also the middle of the fucking night. Like, uh, <laughs> um, you, I, I think at this point, like Carva just wakes up like, what's going on out here? <laughs> just goes back to bed. Um, there, there's kind of like a, a discussion amongst the crew. You can see Priscilla and Gio like staring at the hologram or the, the, the illusion. Um, and mm. after maybe like 10 or so minutes, it, it just kind of fades. And you can see still sitting there is a burnt piece of bacon on the stovetop that is starting to burn. <laughs> like a worm? <laughs> like a worm. <laughs> Um, looting gonna... the rest of the bodies, they did all have wands of Featherfall on them with three charges each, so there are five wands of Featherfall. Um, other than, uh, there's three more pieces of parchment with the same information on them, but they have, uh, nothing else on them. Um, they each have an empty flask that you would know which probably to use to coat the blade. Mm. Um, where's, where's the, where's the, where's the music? In retrospect, with us flying around everywhere, carrying around wands of Featherfall would have been a really good idea. Yeah, practice gave you a parachute. Yeah. Well, now we do. Well, yeah. at least we have rope lying around. Good thing for it. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, as do you? Do you guys want to do anything the rest of this night? Like, is there anything you guys would like to discuss, or would you actually like to get your your full night's sleep? <laughs> I think Quill would drag the bodies back into the cargo hold, probably. Um, there is like a winch that you know you can just kind of dump the bodies if you really wanted to, just let them slide off into mm -hmm. the mountains. Oh, into the mountains. <laughs> uh, Have you pulled everything off them? I don't think Quill's the best person to ask about this. Yeah, so you can, someone can sure give me an investigation <laughs> check for a thorough pat down. Trilby is definitely not either. <laughs> Trilby's priority is he wants to go back to bed, and he cannot sleep if there's p bodies and blood everywhere. Faley's going straight for it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Faley, you find on one of them a very pristine gold ring. Oh, I take it. Um, you're sad to notice it doesn't have any arcane symbols or anything carved into it. It seems like it's just a high quality ring. 
I still take it. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Bailey does love her rings. I you love find, rings. You find a receipt in his pocket for the chameleon ear. Yeah. <laughs> and it says, you lose normal I, ring. <laughs> jump off the boat and die. The end. Ring of normal does nothing. <laughs> Roll a d10 for fun. <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> um... But yeah, is, is there anything you guys would like to do in this moment? Clean I'm just going to say uh, one last little thing to Morenthal before heading back to bed in the night. Morenthal, I, yeah. I wanted to thank you for considering uh, the other choice, and that must have not been an easy decision. Uh, not that it was the right decision, I just simply wanted to offer different avenues, but still... One that must have been very difficult. Yeah. Well, I guess I should thank you as well for catching me. I, you know. Maybe I am more than what I was. Maybe he will live more than me. Maybe he'll be dead by the time we get back to Northcliffe. I don't know. Regardless, the fact that you had considered the different avenue at my suggestion is already an indicator that you have come a very long way since where you were. And I am proud of you. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, well, let me get my beauty rest then. Uh, I... Must make sure my luscious locks are well kept uh, tomorrow morning. Mm. Oh, good night, Morinto. Good night, good night. Watch your step. We haven't mopped over there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Skids through and like the cargo bay door is still down. No, shut the door. <laughs> I have to jump out again. <laughs> all right. So you all passed that first day of travel. Nice and uneventful. Uh, you guys get a nice long rest. Oh, yeah. uh, Faley, you do get the long rest benefits, but you didn't sleep. You you just, you're, you're exhausted. Okay. Um, But you you realize as like kind of dawn comes uh, and, the, and the, the ship is continuing, Um, I think probably at this point, um, Azru is asleep and Ardwill is at the helm. Um, you that 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 kind of blur of sun starlight in your eyes fades, and you you feel like you can rest this night, or or right now in this moment if you wanted. Yeah, I'm um, gonna do that <laughs> for day two. Anything you guys want to do on day two? Bag of many things. Um, Bag of many things. Bag what, of many lizard things. food? Come on, lizard food. Uh, I will say, this day, uh, you do hit that bad weather that Carva talked about. Like, it's not blizzard weather, but it is snowing, and it is it is bitter cold. Um, Visibility's not great, um, but you're making do. You're probably below deck most of the day. If you, if you do go out on top, it's probably chilly and, like... You don't spend long if you do. What you what you get? I rolled an eight. An eight? Ooh. Ho ho ho. Eight. Um Barry, what's your favorite chess piece? Uh I like the uh the knight. It's a All little right. horsey. You pull out a pawn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, whose favorite piece is the pawn? <laughs> I just wanted to fuck with you. Yeah, you pull out a little, uh, like an ivory pawn chess piece. Alright. Can lizards eat chess pieces? It's actually the only thing they eat in this universe, yeah. Oh! Okay, I give it to Faley. Give it to, to the, the lizard. <laughs> oh. I don't know that he's, he's gonna actually going to eat this. I, it does, it's no, bigger no, no, than no, his face. Go just like it. jaw opens up and you're just like the it's whole fucking... day spent just like gumming the pawn. It's it's Jerry with the cheese, but a lizard with a chest piece. Yeah. 
Who ate the pawn piece? <laughs> Blizzard's just looking off to the side. And there's just the clear uh, outline of a pawn sticking uh, out of the top of it. <laughs> I love that shit so much. God damn it. <laughs> um, would, was, well, that's, it, uh, that's your day? Any, anyone else got something? Yeah. I do think Coil would want to follow up with like the crew about the like hologram and like yeah same if mm -hmm. he's around on the ship at all or if he fucked off before they even took off or give me a them, uh, you know an investigation check or perception if you just want to kind of like check right. through the whole ship see, see how thorough you are perception because my investigation is negative one oh well Fucking that didn't mid. help okay uh, there's not a lot of places to stow away on the ship outside of the cargo hold, um, and you kind of give you kind of give that place a thorough look. Um, mm -hmm. You do notice, uh, like as throughout the day, uh, Carva has washed away the, the the temporary sigil of the teleportation rune, mm -hmm. um, and as Azru kind of wakes up and sees you investigating, just goes so. That happened. I'm assuming you're still looking for him. I was wondering, yeah. Well, uh, he he walks over to the side, and you can see there's this small little like um like lockbox kind of on the wall. He opens it up, and you can see um not the same design uh as wands but you can see there's basically a an emergency supply of these wands that have always been on the ship um and you can see one is missing he goes pretty sure he bailed ah uh, i see the thing is he in in the time i knew him he was not a um couldn't do magic. So, I don't know if he was maybe just letting someone Even. onto the ship or something. Hmm. You mean... It was possible he couldn't have drawn the sigil? I highly doubt he was capable of drawing the sigil. But for him to bail like that and that illusion... Um, he clearly knew something was up. Mm. No reason for him to bail if not. Could it have been someone impersonating him? If they did, they did a hell of a good job. I didn't recognize it coming onto the ship. Mm. Everything mm. okay with uh, your crew? Yeah, we're we're all right. Good. Just lucky. Yeah. Yeah, this uh the new one for me. Yeah, I never uh, been on a what what would you call that? Infiltrated? Yeah. They, um, I don't, listen, I don't know, I'm assuming, I, I haven't seen, you know, you all's faces on wanted list, and we've been in and out of Northcliff a few places, uh, seemed pretty direct they wanted the six of you. What have we all done to piss off anybody, though? That is a good question that I don't think I can answer, because, uh, as far as... I, I mean, I guess I don't really know what you're doing down there, and you just come back, like, we gotta go, like, each time, so, you know, maybe I should be asking more questions. Fair. But I, 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 I can't answer that one for you. But I, what I can tell you... Is I think I'll I'll make sure we're a little more tight on security. Uh, I've known Ardwell most of my life. Well, most of his life. 
And uh, if if there's if there's anyone I trust more, I can't think of him. I'll I'll have him make sure he does uh, extra security. Anyone coming in and out of the ship needs to get clearance with him. And it's usually the way it should be, but I mean, but let's be real; those rules get lax over time. That would be appreciated. I can help. Yeah. Also, I'm going to make sure... All, I'm going to inspect all the cargo myself. Usually, I pawn that off because I don't mm. like doing extra work. But you know what? For you all, it's worth it. We're saving the realm or something. <laughs> That's what we're doing, right? Well, thanks. No one actually told me. I think indirectly, maybe. Okay, that's good. It's good enough. Well, I should get back. Ardwell okay. probably is uh, freezing cold up there, so... Hmm. If you need anything, let oh, me know. <laughs> and he gives you a little Thank salute. You. Coil will head back to the rest. <laughs> Just like a few moments later, you Still see like Ardwell come back down and he's like shivering. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's freezing out there, huh? <laughs> you just kind of you just see him like tuck into his bed and then he like comes out later and he's like bundled up with a big quilt. <laughs> <laughs> Sits at the table. No. Oh. Yeah, I think Quill would just be trying to think of who hates him that bad. Mm hmm Just mulling over that for the day. All right. Any anyone else? Good. No. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I, I think he'd take it easy now. Yeah. The, the busy day. All right. A little eventful, yeah. The next. Evening comes, you all lay down to sleep, maybe a little more worried and and keeping one eye open through it. Um, but you have an uneventful night. Faley, the exhaustion leaves you as you finally can get some good rest. Um, no blinding light keeping you awake. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, the third day and the final day of the travel goes. Anything that you want to do or do you want to skip it? to get into bright coin in the morning. No, I'm going to want to roll for a little bit of bag. Fucking, uh, 54. Give me a D6. Um, you pull out a, a, a rolled up piece of parchment and there's a nice little like wax seal on it. Mm. Mm. A I'm, I'm going to break the seal and unroll it. Uh, it is the deed to a small plot of land outside of Ricefall, about an acre's worth. Whoa. You said outside of Ricefall? Mm -hmm. Fuck. Hmm? Wow. Oh, damn. Living the dream. Living the dream. Living the dream. Small, small Trimble little chunk of land. Landowner. Lord Tribble. Tribble. I forgot my character's name. Lord <laughs> Tribble. <laughs> oh, oh, Tribble. Hermsford. <laughs> Tribble. <laughs> uh, a little landowner now. A little bit of a landowner. We might have to take a little detour if we're in the area. <laughs> Hold on. Where, show me the world map. Where the hell is Ricefall? All right, let's do a little zoomy zoom. This is important. Ricefall Sorry, detour, is north know. of Brightcoin. You guys are probably over desert oh. time, but but way up in the sky. Oh, you didn't update on our end, but I pulled up. Straight. Oh, oh, I didn't. I didn't do it. I'm sorry. That's fine. I guess. Guys. No, it's okay. It's all right. No, okay. there you go. Okay. It's it's right here. It's right. Oh, okay. Um, nice plot of land. 
Hobson, you look over the edge and you're like, there is the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, an easy one. <laughs> the big sign with blinking lights on it. Boy, good thing uh, we looked. Yeah. <laughs> Check one off the list. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, though, it's a it's a smooth flying. An evening comes. I think at some point oh. before the end of the day, Coil will probably pull Faye aside and uh, <gasps> talk with her. So, are you? Are you nervous about this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what about you? I won't let them do anything to you. You know that. Thanks. I am. Um... We we watch after each other, so we'll uh, we'll keep doing that, I guess. No. We can't have a, a day, <laughs> a relaxing week, huh? Been a little rare, yeah. <laughs> oh. And now we're wanted. Well, yeah, I am. Um, it seems. I didn't. I didn't have the actually news news to me. Um, I mean, I can imagine. I can imagine it was from before, but but with them gone, I'm surprised it's still in effect. And unless it was something else, I, I don't know, I, I probably should have prodded a little more, but, um, oh, well, you know, emotions. <laughs> He's out there somewhere, maybe one day we can... Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm kind of glad we let him go. It wasn't really yeah. my my top choice, but... I don't know. Seems like maybe it was the right one to make. Hopefully Otherwise. it will <laughs> work out. And you won't Hopefully. It. Otherwise the cycle will never end. I don't think that's what any of us want. Yeah. Definitely nervous, though, but, mm -hmm. I mean, we've made it this far, right? You know that's why we were, yeah, you know, we have, but you know that's why we were tying up Hobson, right? Uh, no, actually, <laughs> you know what, I, I don't think I ever asked why we were doing that, and I maybe should have. <laughs> you just... You thought we were just tying up Hobson for fun? I thought maybe he just wanted it. I don't... You know, some people are... You know, I... <laughs> I guess next time we uh, tie up a party member, I'll, I'll ask a few more questions. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Bailey just assuming everything yeah, is fine. <laughs> Made sense at the time. <laughs> Bailey, like, I, put up I, a can't, fight. I can't like investigate this too long or I will find that it's like there's a problem and I'm just going <laughs> to pretend I don't see it. I'm not going to think about it too hard. Pretend I do not see. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's mostly what Quail wanted to chat about. Okay. Actually, while there are conversations going on, I think at some point in the day, in passing, Cobson does like kind of like say sort of aloud near Morenthal, like, you know, I've never actually been uh like wanted, had a bounty on my head. Um what are you, what are you supposed to You've had a bounty on your head for like 
I imagine a while or thought like what's what are you supposed to do when that happens like what do you do to stay safe be careful don't get caught don't draw attention okay. to yourself mm. and uh don't advertise yourself mm. part of me is gonna have no problem with that and I think the other part might it'll be fine just also don't let the paranoia consume you okay yeah well, anyone yeah. could be around any corner waiting to kill you but sure also well, you gotta you gotta just accept that sometimes hmm. do you well unless <laughs> you can cancel the bounty but mm, yeah we can't Oof. really do that until maybe we get back to the north cliff give me morenthal a mm -hmm. a history or intelligence check your choice let's go history 19 19 um the nature of the like documents you found on the bodies and from Maliki those were not mm -hmm. your group's not wanted hmm it's more like a a, a a hit. Yeah. It is it, it yeah. is not a hey, there's a bounty on your head. It is go kill these people. Yeah. So it's like yeah, we like, can't really do anything until we figure out who wanted this. Right. Hmm. Just okay. Keep your eyes open, I guess. Yeah, I will I will try. You know, I I feel like I'd feel a lot more nervous about this if I didn't have this if I wasn't surrounded by this many people who seem really good at this and who know what they're doing well I'm glad you think I know what I'm doing yeah I mean you you seemed like you knew what you were doing when you jumped off the thing I assumed you knew what you were doing right I knew what I was doing I I'll be honest, now that I think about it, I don't really know why I just jumped. Hmm. I knew I wanted to catch him, but I really should have tied it off first. Yeah. I really did just I... leave it to them to catch me, huh? Yeah, I guess so. There wasn't a lot of time. And I mean, yeah, like they were going to get you. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Get like enough of the people oh, in yeah, this group definitely. trying to do a thing, one of them's gonna pull it off. True. And we are all still alive. So far, eh, mostly. Mostly. Asterisk, as always. Yeah, technically, yeah. Yeah, we're doing no, all right. I, yeah, we're fine. Yeah. We're fine. Hmm. Hobson does seem like he feels a little better. Or looks like he's not <laughs> not feeling super concerned about the bounty thing. So <laughs> he is more at ease. But yeah, I think that's all that I had. Okay. The sun sets on this final day of travel. You all get long rests, anything that you maybe use need to recover make sure your hp and spells are all up um and in morning you are greeted with the sound of azru yelling out go hey we're coming up on bright coin just over i'm assuming there's probably like a some kind of thaumaturgy amplification system below decks we'll say um and as you all uh you, you come up it's it's a it's a clear day uh there's still like a a, a crisp chill to the air as as winter has set in um but there in the distance you can see right coin um hang on <laughs> i got music for it um the city is massive as you approach the eastern coast of the krotos ocean 
The city has been built into the rocky formations of the mountains to the north. The castle of Coin and the nobles districts literally built into the peaks of the mountains. While the city streets spiral down the mountainsides into the middle class and trade districts, finally flatting out into the rolling hills uh, to the south, housing the majority of the population. Rich farmlands, plentiful land for livestock surrounds the city for miles. Multiple walls accented by tower outlooks keep the city well fortified and founded by the Crown's Guard. Uh, the founding place of the Merchant's Pass, the most traveled road in Orlan is busy with traffic and wagons and stagecoach, riders, carts, all different types litter the roads. Um, this road leads directly all the way into the main gates, continuing to the peaks in the Nobles District. Along its path, makeshift stalls and marketplaces are set up, trying to gain the attention of those coming in from a long journey or simply using the high traffic road for its full potential. It's a bustling city, one of the most populated within all of Alithia. Uh, Bright Queen's population is mostly humans. You could probably go a day walking the streets and not really bump into many other races. Uh, but it's not uncommon enough where any of you would stand out. Uh, maybe together it's going to be odd, but uh, you don't feel unwelcomed when you're here. Um, the ship uh, takes its slow descent and docks in the trade district. Uh, the middle class, kind of like the middle of the mountain. It's There's steep roads throughout the entire city that kind of just blend into that the natural mountainscape uh, that it was built into. Um, but as you dock, you're greeted by the smell of fresh baked breads, restaurants running at full capacity inside stalls smelling smoked fish and meats. Um, as you all touch down and the docking process begins, Azru kind of goes out to the lot of you that have, you've gathered out on the, uh, the top decks, um, and a few of the, you know, deckhands and rest of the crew are out ready and kind of preparing for any shopping they want to do or any maintenance to the ship that needs to be done. Um... Azru walks up and says, Well, I gotta go see to taking about our docking fees. We should be stationed here at this specific dock until uh, you guys need to go. Also, this ain't the Shard Coast, but it's a big place. If you're new here, maybe keep your coin pern close. Uh, also, coin purse. I think I said those reversed. <laughs> coin purse <laughs> close. Uh, if someone has an amazing deal that seems too good to be true, it probably is. Don't buy it. Anyways, uh, have fun. Let me know if anything comes up. Um, and he kind of pulls up his jacket uh, and starts walking down to go talk to some of the the, de the dock staff. Um, I imagine you guys start walking out into the city streets. Coil, you are familiar with this place, uh, and to some degree, Faley. Um walking the city streets it immediately comes clear just how populated this is while the the main streets are wide enough and they have like a, a sloped path in the middle with uh step staircases on the sides uh for general traffic um as soon as you get off the main roads though the alleyways are like tight and almost claustrophobic where these high walls of the structures provide little vision of any sky or you know uh, actual view of the city around you and only occasionally does it open up into small spots of greenery throughout the city for uh, a chance to look out and a chance to just breathe. Um, Coil, like I said, you're familiar. You know how to find Preston's estate. It's a smaller house in the Nobles District, which is way up on this main peak, uh, or the, the peak of the mountain you're, you find yourself on. It's maybe like a 30 minute walk from the trade district where you are. Um, unfortunately, most of it is uphill. <laughs> So Trilby <laughs> is going to have a bad time. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you guys kind of exit the, the, the docking area and the city's yours. We couldn't have landed up near the top. <clears throat> it's not where the dock is. Do you guys want to go there right away or find some place to stay first? Might not be a bad idea to have a base of operations, right? Yeah. We'll also say it's, it's like sense. 10 a.m. at this point for you guys. Well, how badly do we think we're walking into a trap? It's like 100%, right? Basically. Fairly 
confident. So do we expect we'll need a place to spend the night? To be honest, we're probably going to need to get out of here quickly. Knowing our track record. So then maybe we don't. Yeah, maybe we. You guys think. Maybe we should just head I mean, straight there and see how it goes. Yeah. Listen, in cases like these, you usually have two options. You either just go straight there or we do some recon first. See what other people say. See what's going on in the city. See what if anyone knows about this or about this letter or about these people. I like that idea. That's not a bad idea, yeah. Yeah. Well, probably not a good idea to split up. Agreed. I already can't find the way back to the airship. Uh, Trophy, as you say that, give me a wisdom saving throw with minus 10. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh well, well, with Flash of Genius, that's a net zero. <laughs> so why would you flash a genius though? Are you, are you, do you want to actually use it? Because <laughs> I feel like zero is better than negative. Yeah, I'm going to flash of genius it. Okay. Oh, yeah. You, that, that, that kind of fuzzy feeling of, of, it almost feels like you're being watched comes over you. And you look around. You don't, give me a perception check just to, uh, as this happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one seems to be looking directly at you. It is a populated street. Like, yeah, you, you, it's like the airport during holiday season, kind of. Yeah, vibe. just tons of people. Sensory overload. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if if I someone mean, is looking, Trilby at you, thought the North Cliff was yeah. the most people he'd ever seen at once, which is true. Well, luckily, a lot of it's more. gnomes, so you can see over them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm tall. But now it's all humans, so you're. Now you're uh. You know, you're back to little boy territory. Yeah. Little boy of 20 something. Little, little 20 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so, so yeah, uh, your call mm. if you guys want to go directly there, do some snooping. Who do, you, who do you recommend we just ask ask around, Morenthal? Just ask Usually strangers. A tavern or an inn is the best place to start. Whatever it is, it should probably not be me. I'm a little recognizable. Yeah, you... And you Dude. stand out a little bit amongst this crowd. He Any raises his hand and like makes a little pinchy gesture. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good point. Maybe he might already know that we're here. Yeah. Well, you already because know it was going to be a turn. But know. it still won't hurt for us to also study up. That's true. Well, Morenthal, uh, lead the lead the way. I was. I, I'm just going to look. Can I see a like a tavern or an inn around us? There's probably a, a few taverns. You're you're like in the heart of the trade district. Um. Mm. It, I imagine you're kind of in like a almost like a like a Wall Street section where there's probably like a few yeah. bars kind of thing. Um, yeah, you can you can easily find one. I'll just I'll just direct everyone towards the one that seems the most busy. Okay. Like the most populous, the one that everyone seems to be going into. It's uh, it's Skinny Thursdays. <laughs> That's the name of the tavern. That's the name of the tavern. That's what it's you get when you don't make, come right? up. Yeah, with a A Y E. Yeah, or A A E. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's busy. It's busy. It, even though it's it's morning. Um, there there's people there drinking. Uh, there's the most of the tables are full with people eating, drinking, whatnot. Um. No one in the the back looks like oh god there's a panic rush. It's this is the norm for here. Yeah. Hmm. As you all walk in, bartender just kind of looks up and goes, 
What'll be? Just to look around and anyone want to drink? I'm a little Kyle parched from walking up that hill. Yeah, Quill can't I... drink, so he just looks <laughs> back. <laughs> it's symbolic. Bailey would take something. <laughs> How sale, I guess. That's great, cause that's what we got. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be. He he's he slides over. We'll say five. I'm assuming, maybe. Yeah, sounds right. <laughs> Every, everyone but Coyle. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to see Coyle with like a full mustache, though. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mustache. I knew. I knew. I know. Got it. Uh, okay, so I'm assuming you guys are you guys wanting to like scope things out? Are you look? Are you are you trying to gain info just from like eavesdropping or directly asking random patrons and stuff like that, or the the tavern keeper himself? I'd probably start with the tavern keeper. Okay. Um, like I'd suggest to everyone be like, listen, we could either listen in on people's conversations, we could ask the bartender, or we could go straight to the innkeeper. Your choice. I'll say pretty immediately, you get the ten like you get the impression as soon as you start to have small talk with this bartender, he goes, "Listen, buddy, I got a lot of customers," and he just he turns his attention to someone else. That's not to say every bar will be like that, but it is a busy bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's Skinny Thursdays, of course. Skinny Thursdays, man. It's, 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 a it's a Thursday, too, like, so you know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Skinny Thursday, Thursday special. Skinny Thursdays. Yeah. Fantasy Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do some, we'll do some, some rolling. Do some, um, either persuasion, uh, just a flat charisma check, uh, or you can pitch me a roll if you think it would be useful in this situation for just the group of you gathering information from maybe a few bars, maybe a few patrons, commoners on the streets. We'll, uh, we'll kind of yeah. take a, a sum of... What the hell? Okay. Trilby had a sip of beer and something changed in him. <laughs> <laughs> this juice has gone off. <laughs> Uh, should Coil as well, or...? Yeah! Yeah! Coil's involved in this. <laughs> yeah. In a manner of speaking. <laughs> that right. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... The, the group of you kind of convene with what you've, you've... You've gathered through this. Um, a few people... Uh, and most of this information surprisingly comes from Trilby. Um, most people have either heard the name Preston Fitzclarence or are aware that they're of noble stature in the city. Um, they, a lot of the people here aren't nobles, so they don't really have any close relationship to him, but they just say like, oh yeah, he's, he's, he's one of those nobles. A, a bit of, uh, like, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about him, but you know, like they, they're not fans of nobles like no one no one here is like oh boy i like rich people you know um no <laughs> one seems like there's a reason for them to be alarmed by this man um you do catch uh especially trilby you catch a few people like frets like who cares about preston it's it's mr wick that's the fascinating thing right now rose up from peasantry to nobles within the span of a few months just from inheriting a bit of money like and and you kind of get a few people gushing about uh mr wick who seemed to be hmm. a candle maker is also what you i you claim. fucking <laughs> how dare you nominative determinism <laughs> strikes again i love it <laughs> um so you, you catch a few people kind of like fangirling over that, like, oh, maybe that'll be me, you know? Maybe I have a distant relative I don't know about and I'll get some, uh, uh, 
large surplus of money and I'll be in the nobles just living the high life, you know, and they just kind of go on like that. But um, that's kind of what you're getting. Like not a lot of people really are helpful. <laughs> Actually, you know what? With a crit, too, I will say, um, there are frequent gallows and balls and parties and festivals that are being held by Mr. Wick. Um, one of them is supposedly this evening, this Thursday evening. Ooh. Um, and well, a few people are talking up. about it, but people, <laughs> most everyone here is not invited. They just are aware of the happenings because they're, they're rich people and they want to flaunt their wealth. <laughs> Thursday ball. Thursday really is a special day. Thursday. This Thursday, yeah. Oh. Well, Morenthal, is this Wick good? Is this famous. good information? Kind of. Didn't really get anything about Preston, did we? No, oh, but this Mr. Wick character sounds really interesting. Yeah. Concerning, if anything. I mean, so we could try another place, or we could just go straight there now if you want. I think we should probably try heading over to the nobles. Yeah. Yeah, if anything, maybe we could learn more about this Mr. Wick. If we can't learn anything about Preston. Well, Coil, let's... Uh, that, I'm assuming it's up. I'm trying to think, Dan. Would Coil, like, know of anybody, like, that Preston, like, deal deals with regularly? That would, like, be familiar with, with Preston? Um... A lot of it's nobles. Um, one thing you mm. learned from Preston in, in, in your time with him was he's a bit of an introvert. You, and he's he, he only talks to the nobles to hate other nobles. Like, I think most of them do. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like neighbors who hate each other and want to do better than each other so they can brag, mm. you know, to each other about each other. Um, oh, okay. So, like... So, like, if he did have someone, it would be, be like, a... To... Like, it would be a high-class, uh, like, shop to go to, and it would probably be, like, they might not have a relationship, like, of... Other than, like, hey, they he hired me to do this, and I did it for him. Would... Would Quill have reason to believe that, like... Maybe his neighbors that, you know, hate him would would be willing to spill some dirt on him or anything. Um, you probably yes. I think if anyone has <laughs> dirt to spill, it would be another noble. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's just getting them to, you know. Yeah, getting them to talk and also being like, who is this random peasant at my door? You know, kind of thing. Yeah. Why is this giant metal dog here? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this lost giant metal dog? <laughs> hmm. But he will, I think, posit that to the group. Like, say that, like, if they could get an audience with one of his neighbor nobles, they would probably happily spill dirt it's just you know getting in and getting them to pay attention to you mm. would it be worth it hey if we go to that ball mm. true but we'd have to be invited unless wow there is always one guaranteed way of getting into a ball Posing as staff. Sneaking out. Oh. That's not as glamorous as what I was thinking we could do. 
What were you thinking we could do? I thought we could dress up nice and then just walk in like we're supposed to be there. I mean, you if could. you want, we could do this from two fronts. A pincer attack. I'm sure yeah, you could sure. Uh, bug some nobles and get their invitation. And... Oh. Mug a noble? Take from the rich. <laughs> just jokingly, just like so offended that you'd think he would do that. Well, if we attend, atrocious. if we sneak into the ball one way or another, it sounds like we might learn a lot more about Preston than we would down here. True. So I maybe guess we now with just the question of getting invites and looking the part and maybe we, we should find I, a place to spend the night if we're gonna maybe not go to Preston's estate till tomorrow maybe I, um yeah and also Fairly and myself probably shouldn't go or if Fairly goes she should be heavily disguised Did we hear what type of Gaul or Bala? Ba Gaul or Bala? Ball Balan, or Gala? Balan, <laughs> Balan Wonderworld? No idea. Wonderland. Hello! Bailey is not a tiefling anymore, so... She's already yeah. this guy. Yeah. Could be a masquerade ball. Even better. Okay, I just really want to go to a ball now. Yeah, I kind of just want to see this party <laughs> at a ball. It's just like, uh, like everyone's like, okay, we can get more information. And Chubby's just like, yeah, ball, yeah. I'm gonna it's wear like two a of us can sneak us in as staff. Two of us can sneak in as like guests. Faley, you can sneak in as a rat, and then we can get like claimed as an infestation. The rat, the other one can be can pose as an exterminator to get called in. We're gonna like one way or another, we're getting into this place. <laughs> I think you're overthinking it, Hobson. We but got the rat. I, we got the rat catcher. I got, we got, I got excited. Everything Sorry. worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining Coil in like a, a, a fucking exterminator's outfit <laughs> with like like a beige outfit with like a little beige cap. It's like this says exterminator written on it and like a sharpie. <laughs> I heard there was a rat problem. <laughs> I heard you had a rat problem. What rat problem? We haven't seen any rats, and then you just throw, like, Faley in as a rat. That rat. <laughs> Whoa, rat upon thee. <laughs> Throws a rat. Um, at this moment... <laughs> Got a bit distracted. Yeah, a yes, DM, sorry. <laughs> Coil, in your mind... You hear a familiar voice. Boy. Coil, are you in town already? Taking up my invitation, I am flattered. I do wish you would come see me. I heard the viridescent javelin just docked, and I suppose you are on it? Yes, you know where I live. And the message ends there. It's not one that like he can send a message back to or anything, right? You you can you can reply to it just with a short phrase, yeah, up to twenty five words. Um, he won't. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he... red. Yeah. Just reply with just red to the red. DM. Um, <laughs> but he will look at everybody else and and be like. Uh, yeah, he unfortunately knows we're here. Uh, well, we may as well just go up there then. Maybe we can resolve this and then just go to the ball as a, I don't know, way to relax after. <laughs> Far be it from me to stop, you know? <laughs> well, it's not me you gotta stop, and he just sort of looks over at Trilby, who seems just lost in the idea of going to a gala. He's he's pretending he's wearing like a tuxedo with tails and he's like posing. Oh, <laughs> adorable! Aww. That's very. We gotta get cute. this boy to a ball. 
<laughs> so are you going to Preston's? Yeah, I guess we'll go straight to Preston's. If if if, if Coyle's getting that message. So. Okay. Yeah, you ain't happy about it. It's a familiar walk. Um the streets start to start to thin out. Um still full of people, but nowhere near the, the busy traffic of the ta the trade district. Um, it takes you a, a good, you know, 30 or so minutes uh, hiking up this mountain. Um, most of it is just like walking up a staircase. There's a few flat sections of it that are kind of give you a little bit of a breather. Um, but eventually you are greeted by the nobles district and the overly opulent houses. Um, and there you see the Almost quaint in some kind of size compared to some of the other mansions here, um, but the very uh, well put together uh, kind of stone facade of an entrance of uh, the Preston estate. I have a proposal that I don't think you will like, but I'm going to say it anyway. Hmm. There's no reason for all of us to go in there. I didn't like this. You can't control me without the key, so it's actually better if you don't. I think most of us are... would be fine, but I think you I think there's one person you really got to ask for that. I'm just going to look at Bailey. I think we should you trust Coyle's instinct on this. Most. I will take this however best you think we should. I think... If anybody, you are likely his target, since you possess the key. Does he know that? I think he can intuit that, since I'm <laughs> not capable of leaving on my own. Yeah, wishful thinking. Um, well, the good thing is, is... I look different, and the bad thing is, is I don't think that matters. Well, no reason to walk into his hands. Yeah. But that's what you're doing. Sure, but... I don't think, no. If you go in there, do you have a way to signal to us if we should go in after you or something? Some means of communication might be nice. Yeah. I don't think I got anything. You don't have like two bees that can talk to each other or something what about you give me the bee and then if I need help I'll send the bee to you um that's a great idea I don't think the bee is that smart <laughs> um what about the bird it Maybe scrubbins? That might work. Let's stop everything. Barry, what's your smartest invention? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, probably scrubbins. Uh, yeah, it's probably scrubbins um, by a long shot. <laughs> I just needed to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the bee just kind of like, it, I just point and it kind of goes straight there and then comes right back. It's real dumb. Uh, scrubbins, I'm, I'm reading up on like how it works. 
I'm happy to throw it to to the DM. I'm I'm I think with your control of scrubbins and the fine tuning workings, uh, you if you 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 could put scrubbins in a state of like, hey, as soon as you are let go, return to me, kind of thing. Like, I think that's okay. totally something you can do. Arming pigeon scrubbins. Yeah. And if you if you want to try to attach a note to him or something, because he can't he can't reproduce speech, so it's it's it'd be up to you, Coil, to figure out how to communicate with him. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should try and invent some some bees that can talk to each other. That's a good idea. write that down okay so what you guys doing i'm gonna hand over scrubbins we given all right i'm just gonna wiggle it around in there scrubbins into the, the scarf this is this a little bird head poking out <laughs> it shouldn't be, be but the visual makes me <laughs> yeah, i do like the visual oh, a lot it's so cute this is a cute visual And Maybe he's... it is at first, and then he just kind of like with one finger pushes the little head down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, yeah, adorable. <laughs> so is it just coil going in? Thank unless you. you want <laughs> some, unless you want company. That is entirely up to you. I'm himself, we're not going to stop him. I think Faley wants to go in, but knows it's not the smartest move. Hmm. Dribbly wants to go in, but I don't think... not by himself because he's not great backup. Hmm. He's... Yeah, Dribbly's kind of required for the the message now to be somewhere else. Yeah, I can hang with Faley somewhere out of harm's way. Yeah. Unless unless you want to rig Scrubbins to go find. Yeah, like Faley. That's a different question. I don't think he would mind, like maybe one person coming along. Um, just as long as it isn't Faley. Probably. <laughs> I say it would be an but easy also, enough like, thing to do if you want to have like Scrubman's goes to Faley. Like, okay. you can you 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 have enough control of Scrubman's you can do a simple action like that. Okay. I still think that. You probably want someone in there who can be versatile, depending on the situation. This is in and out of character. <laughs> I don't know if Trilby's the best yeah. person to walk into a trap. Out of character, I don't want to, like, shove the rest of the party out. In character, I think Coil would reluctantly allow one person to come along. Especially since, like, I think if it's not Faley, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. just a, an innocent bystander that Preston might have to consider before he does anything like crazy right I'll but yeah so Can if, if Trilby wants in there to come oil? I would be down that if Trilby so wants to go get Trilby in there I want to help but I don't I mean, Morenthal or Hobson, I feel like either of you would be more help in there than me. Mm. It, I forget. Does does mm -hmm. Preston know who the rest of us are? Like, would we be recognized? Do we know? It's, I'd say probably only by reputation. He's... I think he's only in the letter mentioned that he knows that Coyle was traveling with a group. Okay. Mm. Um, gathering yeah, which, which artifacts. Which does it seem like makes the most sense for Coyle to be traveling with, to like go in there if we needed an alibi of any sort or an explanation besides Faley, obviously mm. I mean well Hobson is kind of a male character in a way could Hobson pretend to be a noble and Coyle's new owner <laughs> <laughs> and that's no, the cover don't, don't we? <laughs> now this is great Hobson has a really good track record with improving on his feet 
I'm liking this idea more and more. I mean, if also, Smalls was a better liar, I'd say boy. he should take over and then we'd, then we'd oh my God. have a plan, <laughs> but he's a bad liar. So. Keep, keep figuring it out. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. He thinks he's a good liar, though. Yeah, he'd, he'd pour on the charisma, but the lies would not be good. <laughs> yep. Well, those are my ideas. Whatever yeah, you either, guys want to do. Yeah. One of the two of you. Does the place have windows? Can we all, can the five of us just press our face up against the window and watch from the outside? <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely think it would be funny and good for Hobson to go in. Or truly. <laughs> What do you mean good for Hobson? Like, good experience? Well, I, well not, not good experience, but just, like... It, it's it's like that, that random element you throw into a scene. Of, like, Hobson and Vols throw them into the scene. Of, like, you know, Quail is having this dramatic moment with Preston, and Hobson's just like, nice place you got here. It's strong hijink potential. Yeah, not exactly, over a exactly. The hijinks could go... <laughs> well, that's my vote. I don't know how you feel about it, Dan. No, I, I'm, I'm down for, I'm down for whatever, whatever the coil is comfortable with. The shortest person and the tallest person heading in together. Oh no, no. <laughs> yeah, don't make okay. it. <laughs> Did we figure out a plan? Hobson's going in. Hobson's going in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so, so so the rest of you are you just waiting outside out front yeah i don't think directly he, out front that's I, a no, little I think, suspicious i think the bushes, would tell yeah. them to, to head back like maybe find some place to to chill or find a room for them well we'll say yeah we'll definitely do that and then the second coil gets inside we're all just gonna look at each other and go we're not leaving this area right <laughs> there's there's no way we're gonna leave coil just in there well we need to be <laughs> close at hand in case scrubbins comes scampering exactly along. but i don't think we should stand directly in front of the building that's no. really sus no not pressing but our faces into maybe, the maybe window. just i don't know if there's cd alleys in the noble district but somewhere just like nearby where we're not drawing attention to okay. ourselves so with us walking in, are we actually trying to pull a ruse here of like Hobson being a noble who is now mm. Coil's due owner or something? Or is Hobson just here as like mm. <laughs> Hobson's here as just moral just support? As, like a... he just decided he came he came with. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to be his new owner because that basically makes them a target. True, mm -hmm. true. It was a good yeah, point. I, I don't know what like so... what direction we would <laughs> take that in to be useful in lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hobson's your Hobson like just, emotional you know, support animal for this little and... moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hops on a little backpack leash. Yep. <laughs> okay. So Coil and Hobson make your way to the door. Do you knock on the door? Yeah. He reluctantly knocks. A little beat passes before the large, oversized, uh, solid oak door is thrown open in front of you. And there you see the familiar face of Preston Fitzclarence. He's a before, human. Oh. Before the door opens, Hobson mutters, just like, hey, if, if at any point things get bad and you want to get out of here, or even if things don't get bad and you want to get out of here, just to signal to me. I'll thunderstep us out of this place. We'll leave a huge mess. We'll be out. Be gone. <laughs> Coil probably like snorts and uh, nods. Okay, then yeah. The door throws open. Um, <laughs> you see Preston Fitzclarence. He's a human man, about five ten in height, wearing a formal black suit, accented by this red and gold ascot. He's got dirty blonde hair that's side swept into a singular perfect curl on his uh, his brow. Um, he's got a well-maintained, short, uh, full goatee, uh, pronounced cheekbones and smile that exude the face of wealth and arrogance. Um, 
he throws open the door and he goes, Ah, uh, yes, oh, I was expecting more of you. Uh, is this, are you the two mighty flower crowns I've heard such about? I must say it's a pleasure to meet you all. Do come in, do come in. And he just turns his back to the two of you and walks inside. Yeah. Kai, no. the, um, Coil just kind of exhales like a sigh and follows, goes in. Yeah, Hobson does as well, doing his best to be a polite house guest. <laughs> um, the entrance is rich with natural light. Uh, these reflective dark marble floors accented by dark burgundy rugs blend into the dark stone walls and these massive arched windows letting in all the light. Um, a central staircase leads to an upper floor and a small balcony. Um, and he walks over to the side where there's a, a, a side room that has like a, a, a sitting space. Um, there's large red sofas that kind of line the room with the dark oak wooden coffee table that takes up the center of the space and a, and one like kind of more pronounced chair that he immediately just kind of goes and sits to and uh, takes out a, a pipe and starts to to fill it with uh, like some some weed or whatever. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, well, uh, I hope you all have been, well, I guess, I hope you've been taking care of Coil in my absence. And he's looking directly at you, Hobson. Uh, as much as I love for the little chit chat, I'm afraid I don't have much time to talk before this big gala tonight. I didn't of mention course. it in my letter, oh, but it's a little bit of why I uh, requested your presence here, Coil. Oh, also, if you, you need could, a drink or anything, feel free. I'm not a good host. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a fine, but thank you. I was hoping you would enlighten me as to why you wanted me here. Of course, of course, of course, of course, right, yes. Uh, so I mentioned in my letter, I had a lead on one of your supposed missing relics. Um, in terms of exacts, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is actually one of them or not, but... Um, I will say it seems to be of significant power. I tried to do a little research and snooping, but uh, didn't get much from the record keepers and the vaults of Eversteel as to what exactly had been lost. Um, I didn't get more word that a few of the safes that were affected by this explosion were from your employers, the Council of Alithia. Regardless, it happens to be some nefarious mean, and I'm sure you do-gooders will love to be rid of something to this extent. <clears throat> okay, uh, with, with that half out of the way, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, a new face came to light within a noble district in the city. Uh, something like this isn't too alarming by itself. However, uh, the face is one I don't recognize, and I know everyone in this city. Well, everyone important in this city. I did some digging. About two months ago, this old bloke was merely a scavenging rat with the title of a candle maker. Now, if you know any candle makers that could rise to the noble district in Brightcoin, I would assume these are fucking incredible candles or there's something shady happening behind the scenes. <laughs> I gave him a thorough investigation. Seemed on the up and up. No drugs, no shady dealings, no foul, foul play as far as I could tell. So what the hell was going on? Cut to two weeks ago. A dear friend of mine visited Mr. Wick's many galas, many festivals and parties he puts on to just kind of show off his newly acquired wealth and whatnot. I spoke with them after the event, and their memory of Mr. Wick and the events of the past few years seemed a little off to me. They spoke of generous donations on their part to Mr. Wick and his estate, and deep family ties to him and all his relatives. All news to me. I can understand people having secrets, yet it strikes me as odd. Having never heard of this man from my friend before, and he even mentioned only attending the gala out of sheer curiosity, and suddenly he's donating a large surplus of his funds to this candle maker? I continue to dig, ask around some of the other attendants of the events, people I've known and squabbled with for years, all of them suddenly confessing their newly found love for Mr. Wick and his endeavors. No one in the noble district even bats an eye at a strange candle maker neighbor we have now. 
Are you sure you want a normal day? Every single one of my neighbors, myself included, rants about how awful we are to each other and how unworthy anyone in a lesser position should be to be in this space. And yet, oh, we all love Mr. Wick, odd, yes? Well, the little weasel not only infested this district with his presence, but now he holds the largest estate in the neighborhood. Everyone's eating out of his hands, and I'm the only one who seems to have an issue with the matter. I gave him a stink eye a few days ago, and next thing you know, I've been cordially invited to his upcoming gala. I won't lie to you, I fear for so... my life. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you going? Well, uh, a little bit of a social faux pas to turn down such a invitation. Especially someone who seems to gain the immediate favor of everyone else. I, I, I don't think I'm at risk of being murdered, but who's to say I might not generously donate a large sum of money that I clearly don't want to do. And I have nothing to do with a candle maker, I assure you. Just doing so due diligence. I don't think this is going to be... I don't think it's going to be anything, but just a quick detect magic scan just around the space. Has has Hobson noticed anything other than just opulence? Uh, yeah, um, you do notice um, there's a few kind of like pronounced art pieces on the wall, a suit of armor. It is magical. Hmm. But uh, in, in the sense of like sort? the entire suit of armor, helmet. Oh, I see. Body, like everything. Just very nice equipment, equipment, basically. Not like, yeah, not like haunted mansion armor. Like, <laughs> not haunted okay. per se, but maybe not just armor. Gotcha. Okay. Um, it's not like you're not getting different types of uh, of magical energy from each piece, kind of thing. It looks like it's a singular pinpoint of magic coming from it. Hmm. Um, okay. And if you if you had that up, you probably pinged a few similar armor sets throughout the mansion when you first walked in before you went to the sitting room. Oh, okay, so fancy um, place. <laughs> so he goes. So that's where you come in, right? I have to attend this thing to make a pretty presentation of like, oh look, I went to your vala. I don't have any beef with you. I can continue not donating to you and go about my day. And I figured. You know, maybe you all can do some investigating and snooping and figure out what exactly is happening here. It's it uh, clearly something is happening. Yes. So you could get us in. Of course, I can get it. It's an invite only, and he 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 pulls out a little gala sheet, and it's just. It fills, uh, he, he throws it on the, the coffee table in front of you and he goes, it's a formal attire. It's, he does it like almost once a month at this point. He's, he had like three the previous month. And he's, he's only been here for like oh, oh, maybe two months maximum. I, I lose track of time. So what do you get out of this? What? Do you want in return for these invitations? I get to go about doing my own little thing, and maybe if you find something happening here, you can bust him and kick him out of the nobles' district. That's really all you want. Why? Should I want something more? No. Are you offering? No. You just can't stay away from me, is that it? He leans over and picks up the invitations off the <laughs> table and just kind of ignores him. Um, you can, giving it a quick read, it looks like it's a formal event to the, the manor of Jonathan Wick. <laughs> Jonathan, huh? I Jonathan. can't believe it. Jonathan, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there enough for for all of them to go? He's like, uh, he basically says, "You can be my plus six or whatever." <laughs> 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 so, 
So you know there are six. Well, I assumed the flower crowns would be in presence, but if they're not here, I guess I can do it too. Besides, okay, I do have a few stipulations with our, our, our party going, if you'll hear me out. Sure. So, I, of course, you know how I like to snoop. That's my favorite hobby. Um... These galas, they're they're pretty big, usually like a hundred plus people in attendance. Uh, you know, live music, open bar, food that works. He likes to rub the money in the face. Uh, he's like, oh, you gave it to me and now look at me flaunt it. Very kind. Anyways, I want your group to do some snooping of your own. Surely whatever he's up to is in his estate and I have it on good words that he was visited by a dear friend of mine by the name of Elzar Constance. That's right. Of Constance Security. You see where I'm going with this, Constance. right? Yes. The same Constance who... Enlighten me. The Vaults of Everstiel. Uh, Elzar's father designed and created the vaults. He's no prodigy like his father, let me tell you that, but... Every noble in the district has worked with constant security in terms of some vaults and whatnot, security measures built within the estate. If he was there recently, he surely has some kind of vault constructed, some kind of safe box, something that's within the estate. Sneak around, figure out how to open it, steal it, I don't know, whatever you all do. You seem like a capable bunch finding the artifacts of the Council of Elithia across all of the realm. I've heard all of the stories. But in addition to the snooping, someone needs to stay with me. I would request your presence, but I understand if you want to be elsewhere. Because I don't want to be alone in that gala, especially with Mr. Wick. So think it of this would as make most sense for it to be me. Right, since I'm I not agree. Exactly a stealthy individual. So just look at this as like if there is nothing nefarious going on, just look at it as a a um, a, a quick twelve thousand for security, and you could go about your day having a nice day at the bala. I meant gala. I meant ball and gala together. The bala. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fancy it is. Coil is gonna kind of look at Hobson, like to gauge what what he thinks. Uh. Well, seems reasonable enough. Are you comfortable with that? He seems to be thinking. Okay. Yeah. It does we'll sound like it for this you. wick individual may at least be worth looking into. Yeah. It might not be anything, but if it is, it could be a good lead. Excellent. Even we heard about him, and we've only been here for half a day. True. Oh, well, I'm sure he's the talk of the town with the peasants. They all want what we have. Takes a big hit out of his pipe. <laughs> <laughs> He's not jealous at all. Well, I will say one thing. I don't know how the rest of you look, but if they look anything like the two of you, we're going to need a bit of a shopping trip first before the evening. I was going to say, I don't think I'm exactly to dress code. You look awful. <laughs> and I'm, I, I mean, taken. you look you look better than this one, and he points to Hobson. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, get that a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a new sofa after you're gone. <laughs> Hobson instinctively sort of like checks, like looks at his pants to see, like I don't think they're dirty. What's going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> Coil will later just wave him off and tell him to not fucking listen to anything he fucking says. <laughs> <laughs> also, important I don't information. Think suits exactly come in my size. Oh, we can get something. We can just polish you up real fine. Just maybe not the uh, ragged cape. <laughs> maybe we get you a little something fancier. Mm-hmm. Other than Whatever. Mis- Mr. Wick himself, is there anybody el- or anything else as is his estate we need to be wary of? Any other like associates or bodyguards or assets he might have? He does have a bodyguard. Um, I haven't had a direct running in with him, but I spoke. Uh, he's well like you, Coil. Maybe not as special as you. He just has like the most unimpressed eyes. They're like super half lidded like, <laughs> and un- <laughs> <laughs> But one important thing is when we're in the gala and anyone who comes in, like my guests included, uh, there is a a check at the door for weaponry, shields, any of that sort. You can smuggle in whatever you want, I don't care. But know that they're not going to let maybe that big back piece in. And he points to, like, the great sword. That's fine. I expect as much. Well. If you all uh, don't have anything to do, I'm more than happy to uh, escort you to my clothing shop of choice. And since I'm imposing this on you, I suppose I could cover the bill for your replacing those rags. How generous of you. Good. Well, we don't have a lot of time to to get ready here. The evening is approaching rapidly. Let your friends know and uh, we can we can get on the road. I'll nod and just start heading toward the door. <laughs> Absolutely no manners. Yeah, Hobson will follow to thank you for your hospital hosp- coil, wait. <laughs> 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 and try to keep up. Okay. So for the sake of as we're we're at four hours, and I do want to keep playing, but I I'll find us a good little spot to end here. And uh, Joe had to step away, so I want to make sure uh, Gilnick has the opportunity to yeah. fancy oh, themselves yeah. up in some way. So we'll say you guys meet up, you fancify yourselves, so you can you have until our next session to come up with an outfit for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The, the the clothing shop is Wizards of the Coats. And uh, oh it's, it's oh run God. by an elderly human <laughs> named Tass. Um, oh, do you like that? That was good, right? <laughs> oh. I can't believe you've done this. Um, and on the way back, Ho- oh, yeah, Hobson does want to kind of ask, like, hey, Coily, you all right? He seems like oh, a Yeah, I'm just glad he's stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> My sympathies that. But how how long did have you like uh, spent having to exist near this person? It seems exhausting. Too long. Oof. Sorry about that, but I'm not convinced he doesn't have ulterior motives. But we could play yeah. along for now. Yeah, it does seem worth it is... investigating either way. It is also not entirely impossible that he is just wanting to jealously get rid of this man. Hmm. So maybe I'm giving him too much credit? Well, if it helps, we can just treat him like a paying client. We don't have to have to trust him any further than that. Right.
All right. But yeah. Hmm. So you guys have your your shopping moment. We'll we'll do that on the next episode of of you guys going through uh purchasing your stuff Excellent. and heading to the ball just because I want to start or give you guys a little tease of the ball. Um mm-hmm. we can we can do just a, just a little introduction. And I'll probably re do this on the next one, but I I'm I'm excited. So we've got we've got a little Let's see. Oh. oh my god. Oh shit. <laughs> the estate wow. oh of Jonathan god. Wick exudes nobility. I'm lose my mind. And it's excessively <laughs> garish design. The floors are red, orange, marble with accents of gold throughout the entire first floor. The walls have overpronounced molding of rich dark wood accented by many fine exotic paintings. Small arcane lights float in the space acting as small soft lights on the wall and art displays and unique vases holding the well-maintained flowers and plants. A small foyer has three sides, clearly marked for bathrooms, one for a coat room. Uh, Other guests have putting away their heavy winter coats and jackets for the evening. The large central room of the manor is massive. Two large staircases on the left and right walls lead to an upper floor balcony that surrounds the entire main chamber. A large piano sits in the corner of the room played by a a half-elven woman and servant's clothing. Um, the center of the room is a massive 35-foot cube structure. A cloth curtain surrounds it on all sides with a large decorative golden pool string at the entrance of the room. Four massive sculptures in the corner of the room depicting four of the Divine Nine, the Laughing Mask, Molten Hammer, the Guide, and the Plated Dragon. Five doors are on the first floor, two on the north wall, two on the east, and one on the west. And of course... The upper floors have, uh, it looks like, five rooms themselves. As you enter, you're greeted by the guests as they come and go, all making uh, attention around this one small figure, a portly human man with uh, large, finely maintained maintained mutton chops and slicked back blonde hair. He has almost a rosy, sunburned nose and cheek and small ornate glasses accenting his face. He walks beside a six-foot-five figure wearing a gold-accented white armor. They have their hood up covering an almost uh, knight helmet mask design that matches the gold and whites of the clothes they wear. This is Jonathan Wick and his bodyguard, Blade Goldwill. And we will continue the ball on the next episode of Dan Jones and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be a good time. It's going to be good. Thank you, Dan. It's going to be good. I'm really excited. Also, just for fun, uh, the the piano player's name is Amelia Riven Apple. Because she's she's not a Riven Dale. She's a Riven (laughs) Apple. That was was a a joke for me. That was a joke for me. I had to put it the only way you could have made it worse is if instead of Rivendell, it was like Riven Toshiba. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh. But yeah, we'll we'll play through the intro sequence here and everything with a, and you guys can devise what you want to do. Um, but yeah, it it is a, it is a massive estate. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of a lot of a lot of schmoozing if you want, or you know you can just do some snooping. Um, Dungeons and Dragons? No. Schmoozing and snooping? Yes. yes that is. And we all gotta dress up. Yep, gotta dress up. Have a nice night. Figure out how to sneak in weapons. It's gonna be a good time. I can't wait. I'm already. I, 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 I honestly was like, I just wanna get to the ball right now. <laughs> 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 oh, we're just gonna have to go back to the schedule and immediately schedule a new season. Yep. Oh man, thank you guys so much for playing with me. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. You're the best. You are the best. You are you wonderful. Are the best. I appreciate you. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna say That's so much fun. Bye to chat, and uh, okay. I'll, I'll rejoin you guys on a call in a minute. But thank you guys so much. I hope you have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye chat. Bye chat. Bye chat. Goodbye, chat.
Just me. Just Dan. Well, we got to the ball. Uh, do you know, I called this ep- So I, I, I title each episode when I write it. Um, but I don't use it, the titles. Like, I just, I just do that for me. Um, the title of this episode is A Party to Forget. <laughs> Interesting. I guess we'll see why. Um, boy, oh boy. Let's see who's on and we can raid. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I gotta thank a bunch of wonderful people for supporting me. Also, hey, uh, I think I think Saturday is my partner anniversary, so I'll, I'll try to do something for that. Um, but I'll probably see you guys tomorrow for a normal stream. If you'd like to hang, no clue what I'm doing. Um, Arc Flash, thank you for 27 months. Absolute, thank you for 16. Azoth, thank you for a year. Thank you so much. Barry, 64 months. What the heck? That's too much, Barry. Too much. Uh, Naru, thank you for 20 months. Homestar Baby, thank you for 21. Evil Bacchus, thank you for 37. Adam Five Numbers, thank you for 21. Moon Gerard, thank you for 17. Naru, thank you for 72 bits. Absolute, thank you for 25 bits. And Kimana, thank you for 100 bits. Naru Hoodie, thank you for 14 bits. And Ed, thank you for 32 months. Thank you, thank you. Um, MT, thank you for 44. I love Dungeons and Dragons. Well, I love you, chat. Um, Colib, thank you for four months. Thank you so much. And Ed, thank you for six gifted subs. There one to ramens and then five gifted out. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Boy, um, that, uh, that, that, that combat with the, uh, assassins chat, that could have gone so bad. I never answer your questions. I'm sorry, Ed. I don't know how to answer them. <laughs> I don't know how to answer them. Um, and also, hey, if you're, if you're new here, all of these get put on YouTube on VODs. So if you want to see any of the other shenanigans they've been up to. Uh, and this one should get posted as soon as YouTube lets me. What do you think is the tastiest chess piece? Rook. Um. Yeah, Rook. I'm going with the Rook. Honestly, part of me was going to say pawn, because pawn kind of looks, they look tasty, you know? Gobble them up. Let me, let me, let me. Oops, sorry, I, I, sorry. <laughs> I hit, the, hit the bike with my little Chromebook. Um, do I have any other dumb puns that I didn't get to? No. I didn't. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, that, the assassins was really bad. For, so, just so you know, if you attack a unconscious target, so someone's sleeping, and you hit, which, I mean, it's pretty easy to hit, you have advantage on the roll, um, if you hit, it's considered a crit. And on a crit, you double all the dice rolls. So, for those rolls, there are swords did 1d6 plus 3. Their sneak attack was 4d6. The constitution saving throw for poison was 7d6. So that was 12d6. So 24d6 worth of damage, plus 3, if they got hit when they were sleeping. It was, a, it was not going to be a good time. They have plus 3 sword or just 16 dex? Uh, they, they did not have plus three swords. They have is profici proficiency plus dex, I believe, right? Or it might just be just plus dex. They just had a plus three. They had plus six to hit. So yeah, assassins are rough, and it's an auto like it's an automatic crit on their first turn. But because 
uh, Morenthal and Coil came downstairs, they got the drop on them. Yeah, they were, uh, they were short swords, I believe. You thought the plus three was the weapon tank? No, 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 no. No, they just had some nice poison. But yeah. Wow, we. I. So normally, normally I write like between you know, like 10, 12 pages for an episode. I wrote 20 for today. <laughs> If that gives you an idea of this party situation, I went a little overboard with the party. I hope it's fun. I hope it's good. But yeah, we we'll, we'll be doing we'll be doing John Wick's evening gala. I love I love writing like this. Like it, it's so fun. Is there gonna be Rue? No, but I did write down a bunch of different wine types in case one of the players was a butt and asked me about wine. <laughs> I don't know enough about wine. Yeah, just just so you know, all they're serving is for wines. They got some Pinot 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 Gris. How do you say? Is it G R G R I S? Is it Gris? They, they did have Merlot. They got Merlot, Pinot Noir, Port, Chardonnay, Riesling, Rose, White Zinfandel, Sherry. That's all they got. Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. There you go. Bordeaux is delicious. No Bordeaux. <laughs> Wines and cheeses. Okay, this one's going to come up, but this one's just between us, chat. Um... There's a uh, exotic monster company that might come up in the next episode in some documents, and uh, they're called Judy and the Glowfish. <laughs> so stupid. Also, there was there was some stuff in Northcliffe that we didn't get to. I gave Chameleonaire has a name. He's got an actual name. All right, uh, let's raid someone. Who we got on? Does anyone know this music where it came from? Just out of curiosity, while we look for a raid. It's not what I would have thought. It is Paper Mario, the Origami King. It's one of the songs that they play in the coffee shops. Right? I was like... When I was searching for music, this came up and I was like, This is Paper Mario? We're gonna raid one of my art friends. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen them stream in a hot minute. Um, or at least I haven't caught them. Um, they're playing Stacklands. I don't know what it is, but it's got cards. So I love that. Uh, and they're a, a wonderfully talented artist. Um, so say hello to them for me. Give them some carbies. Give them some carbies in love. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you so much. And I'll see you tomorrow.